Good morning, everybody, and welcome to our, our second ever live streamed uh, council meeting. I'd like to thank you all for uh, coming in to watch. Uh, we ask you all to enjoy um, and uh, as we work our way through a very long agenda. As the meeting chair, I give my consent for this open council meeting to be streamed live, recorded and published online in accordance with council's live streaming policy and meeting procedure law 2018. The chair and or the CEO have the discretion and the authority at any time to direct the termination or interruption of live streaming. Such direction will only be given in the exceptional circumstances where deemed irrelevant. Circumstances may include instances where the content or debate or content of debate is considered misleading, defamatory, or potentially inappropriate to be published. Attend attendees are advised that they may be subject to legal action if their actions result in inappropriate and or unacceptable behaviour and or comments. Thank you. I'll now read uh, the virtual meeting statement. The COVID-19 Omnibus Bill 2020 provision allows cancel meetings attendances by electronic means. The requirements of the meeting being open to public is satisfied by the meeting being streamed live to cancel's internet. In the event of a technical issue, with the live stream, the meeting will be adjourned. Councillors are deemed as being in attendance if they can hear proceedings, they can see other members in attendance and can be seen by other members and they can be heard to speak. I now ask you all to turn off your mobile phones and in case of emergency, please advise the chair to switch to silent mode. I now ask Councillor Ellis, for a statement of acknowledgement. Thank you, Councillor Tazari. Basco Shire Council acknowledges Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander people as the first Australians and recognises that they have a unique relationship with the land and the water. Council further acknowledges that we are on the lands of the Bunurong Boonwurrung, members of the Kulin Nation who have lived here for thousands of years. We offer our respect to the elders past, present, and through them, all Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander people. Thank you, Mayor Tazari. Thank you, Councillor Alex. I now ask Councillor Kent to read the Councillor statement. All members of this council pledge to the Bass Coast Shire community to consider every item listed on this day's agenda based on the individual merits of each item without bias or prejudice by maintaining an open mind and disregarding councillors' personal interests so as to avoid any conflict with our public duty. Any councillor having a conflict of interest in an item will make a proper prior disclosure to the meeting and will not participate in the debate or vote on the issue. Thank you, Councillor Kent. We now move to uh, present and apologies. I have no apologies. So we'll run through my screen to make sure that everybody is present and can also hear okay. So I'll start with Councillor Kent. Yeah, Mayor Tassari, I'm present. Councillor Fullerton. I'm here, Mr. Mayor. Councillor Rothfield. I'm here, Mr. Mayor. Councillor Lasseur. Present, Mr. Mayor. Councillor Ellis. Present, Mr. Mayor. Councillor Whelan. Present. Councillor Brown. Present. Councillor Lark. Present. Thank you. Okay, so declaration of interest. I have none to report. Confirmation of minutes, item number C1, ordinary minutes held on the 20th of May. Can I have somebody move the motion to accept the minutes? Mayor Tazari, I'd like to move a motion that the first acceptance of these minutes until the July meeting, if that's possible. Thank you, Councillor Ellis. Can I have somebody second that motion? Councillor Brown, all in favour? Yeah. Councillor Kent, 
Fullerton, Rothfield, Lasserve, Tassari, Ellis, Whelan, Brown, and Lark. Perry. Brings us now to public question time. So we have a few uh, questions. So what I'll do is I will read out the questions and our CEO, Ms. Wasty, will read out the responses. And I thank uh, the community for passing through their, uh, their questions. So question, uh, question number one is there's two questions from Keith Godridge regarding the Inverloch Erosion Surf Life Saving Clubhouse. So question number one, why has only 50 metres of the erosion protection structure been installed in front of the Surf Life Saving Clubhouse instead of the 70 metres as intended and publicised? And question two, what additional protection work will be carried out as a result of the 20 metres shorter length of the structure and at whose cost? Ms. Wastey. Through the Mayor, as advised by DELP, who are responsible for the installation, the overall length of the seawall is 70 metres as per design. This length includes the tow assembly. Thank you, Ms. Wastey. Councillor Brown, you had your hand up. Yeah, I just have a question, um, and the question is uh, only about 50 metres of the structure is visible from the beach. Um, so can, can we have an explanation on, on the dimensions of the structure, please? Thank you, Councillor Brown. Ms. Wastewood, can I ask Ms. Uh, Kennedy to respond to that if Ms. Kennedy's there? Yeah, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, what you can see, the actual structure, it's almost built a bit like a pyramid. So the 70 metres is the length of the structure is 70 metres. Um, and then as it goes along, the sandbags come in. So that's the design of it. But the um, actual structure, which includes the tow, is 70 metres. Thank you, Ms. Kennedy. Thank you, Councillor Brown. Question number two comes from Kevin Griffin. Uh, and it's, there's two questions regarding the media engagement policy. Uh, question number one, will council advise the community of Councillor Whelan's recent comments to the media advertiser May 6, whereby he described some community members as scaremongers uh, in breach of the media engagement policy 2020? And question two, will council advise the community of Councillor Lark's recent comments to the media Central Times, June 2, and advertiser June 3, Whereby, whereby he expressed a personal opinion that contradicts some of Council's financial policies and decisions are in breach of the media engagement policy 2020. Ms. Through the Mayor, Councillor Whelan's comments were consistent with the media engagement policy 2020. His comments did not name any specific individual, but were on the subject of progressing the development of the Cowes Cultural and Community Centre. Councillor Lark expressed a personal opinion that is consistent with what he stated during the council meeting. This was observed and recorded as part of council's meeting live streaming and has been published on council's website. This is consistent with the media engagement policy 2020. Thank you, Ms. Feisty. Question number three is from Graeme Jolly and the topic is our council finances. And there's two questions. Question number one, approved capital works projects costing includes the tender cost management costs and contingency costs, all of which equates to the total project revenue expense. Would you please inform what happens to the portion of the contingency uh, revenue not expensed and what happens to the project budget surplus book revenue once the project is fully completed and expensed? And question two, council reported at the 20 May 2020, say that fast five times, sorry, council reported at the 20 May 2020 ordinary council meeting, there has been $1.8 million of savings achieved up to the 31st of March 2020 towards employee expenses. Would you please inform what departments and the categories have, have the savings been made and will there be further savings ongoing up to the end of 30 June 2020? Ms. Wasty. Through the Mayor. Council practice is to provide for internal project management costs associated with staff costs related to direct project management. 
Council also provides for contingencies, typically 10 to 15% to enable it to manage latent issues such as soil contamination, uh, estimating variances, uh, limited, which can result of, as a result of limited competition, scope changes, unforeseen delays, design changes, third party impacts, such as utilities connections. This is a sound and prudent practice that reduces the risk of the capital works portfolio being underfunded. It is normal for a complex capital projects portfolio to have project cost overruns on some of the projects. Officers manage these cost overruns by identifying offsets from savings on other projects in the capital projects portfolio. This is done within the internal governance framework provided by the Capital Work Steering Group. Net savings on the capital project portfolio after allowing for carryover funding for deferred capital projects is returned to consolidated revenue at the end of the financial year. The departments with significant employee savings at March 2020 are strategy and growth, governance and property and asset management. These savings are mainly linked to ongoing vacancies, staff being backfilled by contractors and acting arrangements within these departments. The COVID-19 pandemic also triggered the closure of some council facilities, e.g. WUCAC visa information centres, and this added to the projected labour cost saving. We now expect the $1.6 million year-to-date savings in March 2020 to be realised in full and have forecast full year savings to June 2020 to be $1.8 million. Thank you, Ms. Fasty. Question four comes from Meg Anderson and the topic is hooded plovers. And there's two, two questions. Would Council consider reviewing the 24-7 dog off leash beach at Ventnor in terms of its boundaries and timing? due to a massive threat of dogs off leash posed to the hooded plovers nesting site at the Graydon's Road section of the beach in order to improve the chance of next season's hooded plover chicks are successful. If not, what measures will Council put in place to increase compliance and reduce the impact of dogs off, off leash in order to improve the survival chance of uh, of this important and vulnerable beach nesting birds population on the island. Ms. Wasty. Through the Mayor, Council will be gathering community feedback and continuing with its observations of dog owner and beach user behaviour at all current beach off leash areas during the coming financial year, which is the last year of the current domestic animal management plan. This information will be used to help identify if current off leash beach areas are meeting community expectations and reducing the impacts of dogs on beaches. This process will inform future activities associated with beach off leash areas for consideration in the next domestic animal management plan. The following improvements to native wildlife protection have been identified for this year. Increased enforcement patrols when hooded plovers are nesting in this location and ensuring controls are conducted at optimum times. Ongoing education, warnings outside the peak period and hooded plover breeding season. Improved signage to ensure greater awareness of the impacts of dogs on beaches in sensitive locations. Increased enforcement, education of rules for using the off-leash area. Thank you, Ms. Wasty. Question five comes from John Fright and his uh, topic is Indigenous Lives Matter. Will the Bass Coast Council approach the elders of the traditional owners and the Bunurong, Boonwurrung members of the Kula Nation on which we are situated to alter the Bass Coast Statement of Acknowledgement and add the following, Indigenous Lives Matter? Through the Mayor, Bass Coast Shire is committed to reconciliation and building strong, meaningful relationships with the traditional custodians of the land upon which we live and work and with the broader Aboriginal and Torres Strait Island community. Self-determination is a key foundation of reconciliation. Under a self-determination model, any change to council's statement of acknowledgement would only be made if the Indigenous and Torres Strait Islander members of our Bass Coast Reconciliation Network requested such a change and the wording was developed by them. Thank you, Ms. Wasty. Question six comes from Helen Grimaud and the topic is Rural Roads Victoria, proposed review of speed limits across Phillip Island. 
In light of a petition circulating at Bentonville calling for the change of speed limits and signage that are con inconsistent, confused, confusing and dangerous for road users and wildlife, will Council, as a matter of urgency, formally endorse a partnership with Rural Roads Victoria in its proposed review of speed limits across Phillip Island? Ms Wastey. Through the Mayor, RRV and Council have recently commenced a review of existing speed limits on Phillip Island and San Remo. The aim is to provide a safer road environment for the local community and visitors, while also protecting precious native wildlife at this popular tourist destination. RRV and Council are working closely together to determine appropriate speed limits on these roads and to consider how best to address community concerns in implementing any changes. Community engagement is anticipated to commence later in 2020. The stakeholder and community engagement will provide opportunity for feedback to achieve the best outcome for safety and efficiency of the road network. Thank you, Ms. Wastey. Question seven is from Tricia O'Brien and the topic is community engagement and conflict resolution. Does Council use its customer requests and complaints database to identify hotspots of community concern and if so, can ratepayers access the data to use in building a body of evidence or prior complaints requests when formally petitioning Council about ongoing matters of concern? Through the Mayor, Council does use the information it captures to provide services and address concerns. However, not all of it may be available to the public. To best support a resident's request to access information or to address a particular matter, Council encourages people to make contact with Council officers in the first instance who may be able to assist with the inquiry and provide the relevant information. Community members can also request to access information under the Freedom of Information Act 1982. Thank you, Ms. Wasty. And that's, that concludes our public questions. Again, I thank everybody in the community for sending in those questions. And just now to uh, petitions, joint letters, deputations and correspondence of which we have none. So notices of motion, item number F1, 220 slash 20, Hour Coastal Erosion. Councillor LeServe, would you like to read your motion, uh, please, without speaking to? Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, the notice of motion is for the Coronella Coastal Erosion. Um, that council notes the urgent situation occurring at the Coronella foreshore um, as a result of coastal erosion and the contamination of Western Port occurring as a result of an exposure of an old tip site. Point two, assist the Coronella Foreshore Committee of Management to advocate to the state government for urgent funds for the re um, remediation of the old waste uh, landfill site, including funds for the restoration revegetation of the settlement point um, Coronella Foreshore Reserve cliff face. This is below Palmer Street, um, which is on the south side of, of the coastal reserve. Assist the Coronella Foreshore Committee of Management to contact the EPA to ensure that they are aware of the current and ongoing contamination of the Western Port uh, occurring from an old waste landfill site exposed by wave action as a result of coastal erosion and urge that they take strong action to rem um, remediate um, the contamination. Thank you, Councillor Lasseur. Can I have somebody second that motion? Councillor Alice. Councillor Lasseur, would you like to speak to your notice of motion? Yeah, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Look, um, this is, uh, we talk about coastal erosion right through Bass Coast and the impact that it's had, and we've heard quite a lot about Inverloch, Kilcunda, Cows um, East and Jam Jarrett. But it came to light um, for just um, some of the locals um, pointed out that there was some um, significant land slip here and there was a lot of rubbish laying around the beach. I did go down and investigate and I know that yourself and an officer have been down there and had a look. Uh, what I would say that um, this is not just for day trippers to go and have a sticky beak at this because it's at low tide. You can't, um, you can only get there around the cliff face at low tide to see this. 
um, but it's still very significant and the amount of waste that has slipped through um, has been exposed through the um, the coastal erosion now me needs immediate action. Um, I'm not sure, I don't think we've had the opportunity to have it costed, um, so, but I, it really needs strong advocating to the uh, state government and DELP and, uh, and certainly through um, supporting the Coronella Foreshore Committee of Management um, in this process. Thank you, Councillor Lasserve. Councillor Ellis. Thank you, Mayor Tazari. I totally agree with Councillor Lasserve. This is absolutely urgent. When I've been talking to the locals down there, they've used a very descriptive word, which is spewing. This is 50, 40, 30 year old household rubbish that is spewing into Western Port and spreading up and down the beaches. It's obviously an illegal tip that was before our time. I think it was 40, 50 years ago that people were dumping stuff here. Part of the beach, if you go down there, it's all it's almost artistic. You can take photos of old differentials, tractor motors and all sorts of stuff that are falling down there. It's terrible. And I really that we need we can't afford to do it ourselves. And it is on Delp land. The state government recently gave half a million dollars to Jam Jerup. I think all our foreshore needs work. And this is probably the second most urgent matter after Jam Jerup. It really needs to be done now so that we can stop all this rubbish going into the water. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Ellis. Can I have somebody, or would anyone else like to speak to or against this notice of motion? No? Councillor Lasser, would you like to, uh, to put it yeah, to a thank vote? You, Mr. Well, I just want to add that it's not only just the, um, you know, the tip, uh, the waste that is coming down, um, as Councillor Ellis said, you know, spewing out onto the beach, but it's also the water runoff at the top that needs to be managed. There's a drainage issue that really makes that cliff face very fragile along there. So that there needs to be a thorough investigation into and expertise in that coastal er um, erosion and uh, mitigation of how to support that cliff face. Because other than that, there's probably um, council's road sits between that and the residents. So it's a, it is an urgent matter and it has eroded over um, as it, we have other issues right across the Shire, but it is um, now a point of having to do it immediately. Thank you, Thank Councillor you. We'll, we'll put it to a vote. All in favour of the notice of motion as it reads, please raise your hands. <laughs> Councillor Kent, Councillor Fullerton, Councillor Rothfield, Councillor LeServe, Councillor Tassari, Councillor Ellis, Councillor Whelan, Councillor Brown and Councillor Lark. Carried. Good, thank you. Okay, so that brings us now to Mayor and Councillor reports. And uh, as per our last couple of meetings, the councillors will all have all emailed through their reports. And if they haven't, they will, in time to be included with the minutes once they go online. I do have a, a couple of uh, statements that I, I will read out. Um, so I'll start with uh, the seriousness of what has happened uh, this week. So Basco Shire Council is saddened and offended at the appalling conduct of the ex-minister for local government towards the Minister for Women. His, beha his behaviour was sexist, threatening and totally at odds with the outstanding progress made by Bass Coast Council towards building gender equality and creating more welcoming and respectful Victoria. Basco Shire Council is an organisation that has zero tolerance of violence or bigotry of any kind. We pride ourselves on developing a culture of inclusivity and respect. We, are, we have a, lot, a long withstanding and strong commitment to pre preventing men's violence against women and supporting our LGBTIQ community. In an it was an absolute disgrace that in 2020, we still see the type of behaviour. We will not stand back and let this behaviour occur, which is why I stand here today, or sit here today, delivering this statement, calling it out. We are an organisation that will always call out violence and bigotry when we see it, and we will work hard towards the prevention of these behaviours in our community, because there is no plot place for them. Thank you. Yeah. Now, yeah. Thank you. Well done. Now, I would like to sadly acknowledge the passing of Greg Reich. 
I would like to acknowledge the passing of Greg on the 15th of May, 2020. Greg was a former chair of our CEO Employment Matters Committee. Greg was appointed to the role in March, 2018 and worked with members of the committee to review for the review of the CEO performance and also oversaw the recruitment process and appointment of our current CEO, Ms. Ali Wasty. Due to illness, Greg resigned from the committee in January of this year. Greg was very, very close with his extended family and our sympathies go out to them. I'd also like to acknowledge Kay Setches and her Order of Australia. I'd like to recognise and congratulate Surf Beaches Kay Setches, who was appointed to the Order of Australia on Queen's birthday on the Queen's birthday honours list last week for significant services to the people and Parliament of Victoria and to women in politics. As a former MP and minister with the state government, Kay was instrumental in paving the way for women in politics. Throughout her life, Kay's political, social and feminist beliefs have been central to her community service and she continues to make a significant contribution to the community. People who know Kay would attest to her active engagement in the community events and causes, her generosity as a mentor and the leadership she demonstrates in all areas of, of her community service. Kay is a highly deserving uh, recipient, recipient of this recognition. Congratulations, Kay. Yeah. Absolutely. Okay, so that brings us now to report requiring decisions, council decisions. So item number H1. So the draft annual budget 2020 and 2021. And to introduce this is Ms. Wasty. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. The purpose of this report is to seek council authorization to release the council's expenditure in, uh, to release the draft budget. Council's expenditure includes over $2.8 million in economic stimulus and fee relief in response to the COVID-19 pandemic. This $2.8 million package follows the uh, $965,000 uh, provided to the community within the 2019-20 forecast. Highlights of the package includes freeze on fees and charges, $350,000, a full year waiver of business signage, footpath trading and liquor licences, 30,000. Three months rent relief to council lessees, 200,000. Business and event recovery support, 40,000. Our affordable housing initiative, 130,000. The draft budget also contains council's largest ever capital program of $28 million. This is deliberate to stimulate our local economy. As a result of the list of projects I'm about to read out, it is quite long. We have the Bass Coast Dinosaur Trail Master Plan, 250,000. Public Realm Improvement Plans for Cows, 250,000. Gap Road Feasibility Assessment and Plan, 100,000. The Strategic Positioning of Wonthaggy to Support Its Growth, 40,000. Wonthaggy Secondary College Senior Campus Structure Plan, 100,000. Wonthaggy Northeast Precinct Structure Plan, 150,000. Real Jetty Activity Area Precinct Plan, 30,000. In addition, land purchases and associated building works, 10.93 million. The replacement of plant fleet and equipment, 2.34 million. Infrastructure work such as pathways, roads, drainage, open space and recreation facilities, 6.4 million. Also, we have the aquatics planning and design, 3.08 million. Cows Cultural and Community Centre redevelopment, 4 million, being the initial funding for a $19 million project. Wonthaggy Guide Park, 1.15 million. Phillip Island Transfer Station, 0.25 million. Climate Change Actions, 500,000. Anderson Road Boat Ramp East Car Park Upgrade and Cows, 0.38 million. 
sales to netball court and toilet pavilion upgrade 500,000. The proposed budget ret retains alignment with the long-term financial plan and continues the refocusing of finances from the delivery of day-to-day -day services to investing in the future of the Shire through capital upgrades and renewal of existing infrastructure base. The report recommends that Council release the proposed budget for public exhibition and submissions from the 22nd of June 2020 to the 21st of July 2020. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Wasty. Can I have somebody move and second? Councillor Rothfield, you would like to move it. Councillor Wheel, and you would like to second this motion. Councillor Rothfield. Thanks, Mr. Mayor. Um, yeah, I think Ms. Wasty has uh, covered that very well. Uh, and there's a, just a couple of other things I'd like to point out. The 28 million in capital works is on the back of 35 million, which was in this current year. So it just shows you how things are moving along in the Shire. Um, asset renewals at about 88%. Again, it's not our 100%, but it's still fantastic compared to where we've been at in the last handful of year, years ago. Um, unfortunately, uh, we are going with the um, proposing, the 2% uh, rate cap uh, increase. Well, just to look at that in, in, in arithmetic, in, in the numbers, we've got an extra $1.2 million we receive in income uh, from that rate increase, but 750 of that goes straight into really supporting the community, um, um, as uh, Ms. Wasty mentioned, um, specifically free, uh, freezing um, fees and charges and, and, and other bits and pieces. That's 750. And then there's a massive amount in, in stimulus, which we've got built in. So we can justify the fact that that is going in the right direction and it's being spread across the community. Um, and let's face it, this is a proposed budget now going out for uh, community uh, uh, consultation or re reaction or a feedback, um, and I, I applaud it. And I, I think it's good. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Rothfield. Councillor Whelan. Thanks, Mr. Mayor. Yeah, I, I endorse those comments by uh, Councillor Rothfield. I wanted to congratulate the team for putting together a, what I think is a pretty good effort in a very difficult circumstance. And uh, these circumstances, unfortunately, do come along from time to time. We're in one of those at the moment with the pandemic impacts on our economy. Um, so the support to the community, uh, they've seen their budget progressively get eaten away as we've, we've tried to support the community as much as possible. Uh, one of the important things is we've kept a good account of that and that is recorded in the budget as, as the sorts of expenses and, and it's clear to people where that money has gone. Um, as uh, I heard uh, Ms Wasty say earlier, um, it's, this is about stimulating the economy now and, and it's, it's that strong capital works program that's so important and I'm pleased to see the CCC, the Cows Cultural Centre is leading that and will bring much needed activity into that town to help stimulate the economy that has been absolutely smashed by, by this pandemic. I'm very pleased to see the climate change provisions there and uh, we're progressing well on the preparation of the climate change action plan so that's very important and of course when we see our coast crumbling before our eyes right around our shire, we realise how important uh, starting to get prepared to do work on climate change adaptation and also to reduce emissions is. Um, I commend uh, re referring this to the community as is intended by the resolution, Mr Mayor. Thank you, Councillor Whelan. Would anyone else like to speak to or against this recommendation? Councillor Lark. Thank you, Mayor Tassari. Our community understands and recognises the need for further structural reform of Council's financial and accounting practices, including balance sheet, operating and capital budgets, and long-term financial plan. However, that is for discussion on another day. Today is about our community and recovery from COVID-19, and I compliment our Chief Financial Officer and team for the work that they have done in constructing the 2020-21 budget for these uncertain times. On balance, I'm satisfied with some exceptions with the current COVID-19 focus on supporting the health and well-being of our community, business and jobs recovery, notwithstanding significant legacy issues and challenges with forward priorities that remain to be resolved. Thank you, Mayor Tassari. Thank you, Councillor Lark. 
Would anyone else like to speak to or against this recommendation? Councillor Oliver, sir. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Look, I think point four is uh, just calling on the written submission. So this is an opportunity for the community um, to have their submissions put forward uh, and they're accepted up until the 21st of July. So it, it does give them like a month to uh, get their submissions in. Some years we've had very little, we have a lot of discussion, but we don't get very many submissions. So good or bad, I'm, I'm happy for to receive them. Thank you, Councillor Lewis. Would anyone else like to speak to or against this recommendation? Councillor Rothfield, would you like to speak again or could it do a vote? I um, just want to just cover off on one thing that, that has come up occasionally, and that is the borrowings. Uh, um, I know that's come up in the press, and, and I think it's probably good to address it. Um, I, you know, interest rates are unbelievably low, and this is a time to be brave. And I, I again, I applaud um, our financial uh, uh, experts who are um, planning for the future and intergenerational um, uh, uh, infrastructure, which is going to just bring us into this, this century. Um, and which has been badly needed for a long time within our shire. Um, but something that has actually been compared, um, and I've seen it in the press, uh, that South Gippsland Shire was actually compared to us recently at having no borrowings and we having so, such a large amount of, of borrowings at the end of uh, proposed um, at the end of June. Um, South Gippsland Shire receives 80, received $86.5 million in operating grants over the last six years. That's including financial assistance grants. And uh, for the same period, Bass Coast Shire received 54.5 million, which is a difference of $32 million in those grants. Um, and this is all based on a convoluted calculation of permanent population and size of our shire. So I think we need to actually put things in perspective. Um, I think if I'm correct, I think our, our rates are something like $65 cheaper per, per assessment than South Gippsland Shire. So, you know, I think rather than criticising um, our shire, I think we should be looking at, you know, how well we do, considering all things considered. But I, as I say... I think Sorry. Thank you, Councillor Rothfield. So we'll put it to a vote. All in favour of the recommendation as it reads, please raise your hands. Councillor Kent, Fullerton, Rothfield, Lesserve, Tassari, Ellis, Whelan, Brown and Lark. Carried. Item number H2, response to petitions, joint letters, sunset script, residents, amenities and open spaces. And to introduce this report is Mr. Sturton. Mr. Sturton. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. The purpose of this report is to provide response to a petition received at the Ordinary Council meeting on 19th of February, 2020, in relation to roads, open space and maintenance at sunset strip. The report notes that council's policy is to bring all unsealed roads in urban areas up to modern standards. The mechanism to achieve this is through the urban road and drainage improvement policy, which is the most equitable way of achieving this infrastructure across the Shire. Sunset Strip is presently fourth on the list of areas for improvement. With regards to the open space request, council manages its play spaces in line with the play space strategy 2017. The Place Space Strategy nominates a hierarchy and service level provision of all open spaces based on the size and use of each space. The Sunset Strip's Place Space is designated a local level play space, which did not include the provision of barbecues or public toilets due to cost and ongoing maintenance. With regards to the maintenance request, Council has conducted mowing in the road reserve near Vision Circuit and will monitor the need for further clearance of undergrowth in accordance with fire reduction standards. Thank you, Mr Mayor. Thank you, Mr. Sturton. Can I have somebody move that motion? Councillor Fullerton, and can I have somebody second that motion? Councillor Kent. Councillor Fullerton. Thank you, Mr. Sorry. Um, my greatest frustration and disappointment in my whole time in council is the failure for the um, provision of street schemes and development of our estates. Uh, which can only be done through proper drainage schemes and road schemes, providing footpaths and amenities for, for those outline, those areas to become genuine communities. Um, the push for having a temporary spray seal has been abandoned by council and rightfully so, because it's a cost which can't be, um, which, which I feel is not acceptable. Um, 
way back in 1983, the Shire of Phillip Island put through a program to do every single street on Phillip Island, and that was thwarted through different appeals and whatever. Sunset Strip was thwarted recently um, with angry people from the city loving the dirt. Um, I just, I've been approached by many local people out there, people who actually live in that area, pleading for support to get a streets game up and done. And that's what's needed there. Um, back in 83, 84, the cost was less than $3,000 a block. Now it's up to about 18. Um, do we wait till it's 30 or 40? We need to get it done. And um, we need the people of Sun Sunset Strip and, uh, and other areas to get right behind council and assist us in getting these street schemes done and creating our communities. Thank you, Councillor Fullerton. Councillor Kent. Yes, I've uh, heard Councillor Fullerton's statement and I agree with it 100%. Um, unfortunately, uh, yes, we've, we run up against this pr uh, problem of 50% of our uh, residents aren't locals, holiday houses and so forth. Uh, and unfortunately too, financially, the, the council just can't hold the borrowings to go ahead and do all these schemes at once. So there has to be a list and we have to tick them off. And uh, look, later on in this meeting, we'll be talking about uh, Pioneer Bay. And I suggest that the community, they, they've been told over and over again, the, um, the Primus Seal is, is not a long-term outcome. They need to go down to Cape Woolamai, speak to the residents there, and I can guarantee they will get such a a great feedback from, hey, we put in a little bit of a complaint before we got our roads and uh, done, but the outcome is great. And I didn't use that word fantastic, Steve. Thank you, Councillor Kent. Would anyone else like to speak to or against this recommendation? Councillor Whelan. Yes, thanks, Mr. Mayor. I'd just like to reinforce what uh, Councillor Fullerton has said. This should have been done. It was thwarted at, towards the end of the last council. Um, and at that time, I was also hearing from people who did want it, people with young children who wanted to see the roads and drainage scheme. I know there are some people who passionately and very obstinately oppose paying for the roads and drainage scheme, but I think the point we need to make here is that the developers did it on the cheap. And, and uh, they, they, they got away with putting in third world conditions, just subdividing and putting a few tracks in. That's not good enough. And I think, uh, you know, we have to stick to our policy, which is to facilitate uh, getting very good facilities for these, um, these developments, these communities. But it has to be done through a roads and drainage scheme. Thank you, Councillor Whelan. Uh, would anyone else like to speak to or against this motion? And uh, why I'm waiting to see, I, I, I have to just share with everybody the reason I'm smirking. Um, and those of you that uh, come to our meetings live will uh, will know that normally on a Wednesday, we have uh, a lawnmower right out the window, mowing the lawns. <laughs> and for Councillor Fullerton, we've got one there right now. <laughs> and we've just had staff go running everywhere to try and... Uh, get them to move move on. So I apologise. That's why I was smirking, but it, it's, it caught my, it hit my funny bone. So sorry about that. Would anyone else like to speak to or against this uh, this recommendation as it reads? No, Councillor Fullerton, would you like to speak again, close or put it to a vote? No, I would like to say a couple of words, just yeah, reinforcing what I had said before. And um, the greatest frustration I have is that our whole time in council we have not had one street scheme done and and to me that's just it's such it is so wrong um we're supposed to be designing and continuing construction and I'd certainly like to see that brought forward and done um the the aggression and anger that comes from particularly non-residents in relation to that um came to the fore at Pine Avenue in Cowes and um when that was completed, the result was just astonishing. And uh, every single person to a landowner had, had approached council and said, I'm sorry, I was so wrong. Um, it's something we need to do, we need to look at. Uh, and I'm glad the mower's disturbing you because if it is, just send it over to cows. 
Thank you, Councillor Fullerton. Could we put it to a vote? All in favour of the recommendation as it reads. Councillor Kent, Fullerton, Rothfield, Lasur, Tassari, Alice, Whelan, Brown and Lark. Carried. Item number H3, proposed planning scheme amendment C159, Mars Landing Integrated Marina Development. And to introduce, please, Mr Sturton. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. The purpose of this report is for Council to consider requesting the Minister for Planning to progress a planning scheme amendment. This amendment is a proponent-led proposal that seeks to rezone 253 hectares of land for the purposes of a new integrated marina-style mixed-use development located at Inverloch Venus Bay Road, known as Mars Landing. The land is not within any existing township boundaries and is presently zoned farming zone with a small section within the public park and recreation zone. The site is covered by an environmental significance overlay, a significant landscape overlay, and a land subject to inundation overlay. Officers have considered this proposal and find that it is contrary to the Planning and Environment Act relevant ministerial directions in the Bass Coast Planning Scheme. It is considered that this proposal is not strategically justified and represents an inappropriate development that is unsupported by any existing state, regional, or local policy. It is recommended that Council do not seek authorisation from the Minister to progress this planning scheme amendment. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Thank you, Mr. Sturton. Can I have somebody move and second this recommendation as it reads? Councillor Brown and second, Councillor Rothfield. Councillor Brown. Thanks, Mr. Mayor. Yeah, look, I'm, I'm happy to support the officer's recommendation not to seek authorisation. Um, there's quite, quite a few issues with this, this application. Uh, this development would be a, a massive development. Um, it would create a totally new settlement in an area that where a settlement doesn't currently exist. Um, it would be it would be separate to, but very close to the township of Inverloch. And to me, it's a little bit unclear about what the relationship between the two settlements would be. Um, Inverloch has quite a few services. Um, I think uh, uh, this, this new settlement would have considerably less so. So I imagine what you'd have is a, a lot of um, houses and some new residents, and a lot of them would be traveling to Inverloch uh, using that supermarket, using a lot of the services within the, the current town. And so that creates a lot of issues. If, this development, if it were to go ahead, would re require massive earthworks, massive earthworks. Um, it was almost mind boggling the scale of the earthworks that would have to take place. Um, it would require dredging, uh, dredging out into Anderson's Inlet, and that, that is a real big issue. And I know that that's a real concern for many of the residents who have been e emailing me. Um, it is a really big issue. Um, I think that uh, well, one thing we have to be careful of in Bass Coast is the, the lineal urban sprawl across the Shire. Um, at the moment, we've got, uh, you know, coastal townships dotted along the coast. And uh, there's often, you know, good spaces in between settlements. And one of the worst things we can do is just to have wall-to-wall -wall, uh, urban the urbanisation of the coastline. There needs to be there needs to be separation between settlements. Uh, this this proposal is outside any town boundary, and uh, currently it's zoned farmland. And I'm very much in favour of of trying to keep our farmland intact if we can and uh, supporting the agricultural community. What, one of the worst things that could happen would be the suburbanisation of Bass Coast. Um, and I know within Inverloch itself at the moment, you've got a lot of properties that are holiday homes. Yes, you've got a lot of permanent residents, but you've also got a lot of holiday homes. Now, if this went ahead, I imagine you'd have a very similar thing. A, a lot of them uh, would uh, you know, perhaps they'd be rented out on Airbnb for a lot of the year, and that, and that creates a lot of issues as well. Um, but overall, um, 
I'm happy to support the office, officer's recommendation. Thank you, Councillor Brown. Councillor Rothfield. I'm not gonna be as polite as Councillor Brown. I think this is monumentally absurd. Right. Here we are, we've been declared a distinctive area and landscape, and this is a magnificent location. And the proposal is just so, well, as, as the officers say, not strategically sound, or, or not a, doesn't represent a sound strategic planning uh, um, um, idea. Um, I am delighted that they have not um, in any way sought for us to go further with this. And I totally support the recommendation. That's it. Thank you, Councillor Rothfield. Would anyone else like to speak to or against this recommendation? Councillor Lasseur. Um, thank you, Mr. Mayor. And I agree totally with uh, what statements the other councillors have made and agree with the officer's um, recommendation on this. In, a, in the report, it talks about an inappropriate intrusion on a fragile coastline. And um, we've heard about the impacts of coastal erosion. We know that the, the problems at Inverloch have been um, significant. And yet, you know, to do this or even present this type of uh, report application to council uh, that's outside the count town's boundaries it's, um, and land subject to inundation is just really inappropriate. So I agree with the recommendation. Thank you, Councillor Sir. Councillor Whelan, did I see your hand up? Yes, you did, Mr Mayor. Just briefly, uh, I, I agree with all of the comments that have been made, so I'll be brief, but uh, the, the whole point of the environmental overlay for this area is to make sure uh, the developments are environmentally sensitive. This one absolutely takes the environment and, and chucks it out the window, really. It's in the LSIO, the land subject to inundation, and it seeks to delete that. Um, it's, the, there are Aboriginal heritage involved in the area and also Anderson's Inlet as a marine nursery. They're, they're really important things and what the Dells, or the distinctive areas landscape is all about. Um, I just think it's so important and we need to understand that this has got history, this, this site uh, was previously rejected by a previous minister, Minister Della Hunty. And, and I think they were smart to do it then and I think we'd be wise to do it now. So I commend the recommendation as well. Thank you, Councillor Whelan. Would anyone else? Councillor Kent. Thank you, Mayor. I'll be a little bit like Councillor Rothfield. Um, I don't want my backyard wrecked. I dive, I fish, I fish in the inlet, and I don't want that destroyed. I'd like to thank all those people who have made submissions. They've been read by us all. And I'd especially like to uh, thank those experts who've made submissions first. Uh, you know, dredging in that area, my opinion is that would just destroy it. There's enough used down there environmentally with Inverloch for us to deal with already. Let's move on from this ridiculous proposal. Thank you, Councillor Kent. Would anyone else like to speak to or against? Councillor Lark. I've received a consider considerable amount of uh, community correspondence in respect of the matter, and few, if any, have been supportive of the development. Apart from the planning considerations which have been outlined by Councillor Brown and others, community sentiment will drive my decision today. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Lark. Would anyone else like to speak to or against this recommendation? Councillor Fullerton. Thank you, Mr. Sorry. Um, first of all, I'd just like to apologise to all of the people who have sent emails, and there's been a huge volume of them for, for not replying. Um, I understand the Mayor has been replying on our behalf, but um, yeah, with that volume of emails, it's difficult to reply. Um, I don't pretend to know that area very well, but I went and had a, as close a look as I can. Um, when we stood for council, we committed to maintaining town boundaries. Well, this area is is not in that realm. It's not a it's not part of the town boundary. It's creating a new town. And as Julian said, as Councillor Brown said, it's just um, totally defies the um, our, what we're looking for in as in planning for the West Coast. So more than happy to support the recommendation. Thank you, Councillor Fulton. 
Would anyone else like to speak to or against this recommendation? No, Councillor Brown, would you like to close or put it to a vote? Yeah, I would like to bring those things, Mr Mayor. Um, some of the other councillors talked about the land subject to inundation overlay, uh, which is absolutely correct. The, I mean, most of this land sits within that. So my view is, I mean, it's one thing to um, have existing settlements within that. It's, it's another thing altogether to, for us to create a new settlement that, right. that is covered by that overlay. And it, it just creates a massive problem for the future. Um, so that, that's very important consideration. Um, a lot of the uh, planning scheme considerations are noted in the report. I know under the state government's Marine and Coastal Policy 2020, under at least one of the items there, 8.11, it, out, it outright prohibits the development of new residential and canal estates. So um, a, lot of, a lot of the detail is in the planning report itself. And uh, I think, <laughs> I mean, I think I know it's not wise to create a whole new settlement in an LSIO. Thank you, Councillor Brown. We'll put it to a vote. All in favour of the recommendation as it reads, please raise your hands. Councillor Kent. Fullerton, Rothfield, LaServe, Tassari, Alice, Whelan, Brown, Lark. Carry. Item number H4, Integrated Water Management Plan, and that's to be introduced by Mr Sturton. Thank you, Mr Mayor. The purpose of this report is to present the Integrated Water Management Plan 2020. The Integrated Water Management Plan establishes clear strategic objectives for Council's role in the water cycle and enables both collaborative opportunities and funding opportunities to partner with stakeholders for integrated water projects. The strategic objectives of the plan are to develop water management targets and align with other council, state and federal documents, provide guidance for master planning, development approvals, funding opportunities and project prioritisation, provide support to the regional strategic direction statements, incorporate council's vision and values and establish clear targets to strive towards, engagement and collaboration with all stakeholders of the water cycle and provide strategic basis for the integrated water management plan implementation document. The integrated water management plan will enable collaborative water management solutions. It will also provide better value for community investment by realising shared benefits as a result of these collaborative integrated solutions. Thank you, Mr Mayor. Thank you, Mr Stern. Can I have somebody move and second this recommendation as it reads Councillor Whelan and second it. Councillor Wallace, uh, Councillor Whelan. Thanks, Mr Mayor. Yeah, we're getting on to the sexy stuff now, the engineering nerdy stuff, but it's really important because it's about coordination between agencies and, and departments, and that's so important that we're actually working to uh, an overall plan and the ability to, uh, to, you know, that Melbourne Water may do one thing or may fund us to do something uh, on their behalf. And it's bringing the agencies together. I think that's just, you know, this is reform. It's really good stuff. It's about the water cycle. It's about uh, flooding, storm water, it's about potable water, and also how we best manage wastewater. So they're very important areas of, of, of our operations. And of course, it's given us the opportunity already to fund some of the biolinks because the importance of water retention, reducing runoff and those sorts of things is an important thing that's considered in this plan. I think that it's great work for the officers and I thank them for their time last week in taking me across it. Um, but it's good work, thank you. Thank you, Councillor Wheel and Councillor Law Serve. Uh, nothing really further to add, Mr Mayor. Thank you. I think that's uh, Councillor Whelan's covered it. Thank you, Councillor Law Serve. Would anyone else like to speak to or against the recommendation? Mm. Councillor Fullerton. Thank you. Um, yeah, look, I commend the report. I was actually was unable to attend the briefing on it, but um, there was one issue which is a major concern to me, and I think we should be looking at um, the, um, the commencement of putting litter traps on our stormwater drains. Um, it's, a, it's a continuing issue from all of our residential areas. At the jetty at Cowes here, um, there's a stormwater outlet next to the jetty which has thousands and thousands of cigarette butts washing out into the 
into Western Port along with other sort of rubbish. And uh, yeah, it's just one extra thing which I'd I'll be speaking to our uh, managers about, but it's something we need to seriously look at. We have mentioned it before, but certainly something to consider. Thank you, Councillor Fullerton. Would anyone else like to speak to or against? No, Councillor Whelan, would you like to close or put it to a vote? No, thank you. No, put it to a vote. Put it to a vote. All in favour of the recommendation as it reads? Councillor Kent, Fullerton, Rothfield, Lesser, Sari, Alice, Whelan, Brown and Lark. Carry. Okay. Item number H5, Drainage Asset Management Plan 2020 to 2024. And that's to be presented by Mr. Sturton. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Another sexy one. The purpose of this report is to present the Drainage Services Asset Management Plan 2020 to 2024. The Drainage Services Asset Management Plan outlines the management and maintenance of Council's drainage infrastructure that includes 36,947 individual assets and 443 kilometres of underground drainage pipes with a total replacement value of over $106 million. This plan considers Council's drainage asset base and using asset condition data models the maintenance requirements needed to ensure that the drainage asset base achieves its full useful life expectancy in line with approved service levels. These maintenance requirements have subsequently been built into the 10-year long-term financial plan. The Drainage Services Asset Management Plan ensures that Council complies with its regulatory and legislative requirements and proposes to achieve efficient asset management and provide sustainable outcomes that are met by Council's financial planning. Thank you, Mr Mayor. Well done, Mr Stern, and I'm not sure, in, certainly not in my time, have I had a, uh, a report introduced uh, that way. So well done to you. Could I have somebody move and second uh, that motion, please, if I could? <laughs> Councillor Whelan and second it, Councillor Kent. Councillor Whelan. Thanks, Mr Mayor. Yes, I agree with uh, the general manager. Uh, very exciting stuff. And in fact, I do recall your words when we had this briefing was it was surprisingly interesting. So there you go. Uh, when we get into the nerdy stuff. Um, this is the unseen work of council and uh, they have, a, 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 as the general manager indicated, a, a massive infrastructure that's under the ground largely and, and not seen, although there's some above ground assets as well. And it's changing uh, around to a performance, a service model as distinct from, from the asset model of maintenance. But the, the thing that was of particular interest to me is the, is the star rating system. Um, I mean, I doubt the wisdom of a one-star rating that has the water from flooding coming 30 centimetres above the floor level. But anyway, they might have called that something else. But uh, the, the five-star rating, actually, the, the getting five stars means that there's no water actually on the block. And in fact, the, the water, if we have uh, stormwater runoff and, and potential flooding, is, is uh, retained on the roadside. Now, that's important. I uh, note the comments uh, made also by Councillor Brown in relation to Mars Landing with the LSIO. This, this, this is pertinent to that because we, we have had recommendations for new subdivisions in LSIO areas. Now, what this says, and uh, we, we would only want to... Mm. Uh-oh, Councillor Whelan, you're muted. Well, at this point, we've lost the uh, the audio, Councillor Whelan. So, have you turned it off by mistake, or no? We'll have to adjourn. We'll have to adjourn the meeting at this point um, until we try and fix Councillor Whelan's audio up. And I ask all councillors just to hold hold for a couple of minutes. Are we back on? Oh. Oh. Use your phone, ask him to use his phone. If we could just hold steady and quiet for two minutes while we wait for comms.
Okay, so sorry for that. Sorry for the, the tech difficulties, but uh, we're assured that they have been fixed. So I'll now go back to Councillor Whelan, who's doing the opening comments on item number H5, Drainage and Asset Management Plan. Councillor Whelan. Yes, yeah, so, well, I was waxing lyrical there to myself. So um, what, one, one point I wanted to make, and I don't know whether, I, whether you actually heard it before, was that the five-star rating, which is that water will not get onto the block, is the level um, that the engineers want to see for new subdivisions. So I was making the point that it's very important that the planners pick up that recommendation for planning and that where we've had recommendation, recommendations in the LSIO previously, if I measured against that, it's unlikely that they would have been uh, made as recommendations to approve a subdivision. So that's the only point I'd like to make. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Thank you, Councillor Wheel. And before I go to you, Councillor Kent, and we continue on, can I please just reconfirm that we can all hear and see each other? So I'll go through the room and ask you to uh, say yes, or, or however you want to respond. Councillor Kent. Yes. Councillor Fullerton. Yes, I can see and hear everything. Councillor Rothfield. Yes, Councillor Tassari, uh, Mr Mayor, absolutely. Councillor Lasseur. Yes, Mr Mayor. Councillor Ellis. Yes, Councillor Tassari. Councillor Whelan. Yes. Councillor Brown. Yes. Councillor Lark. Present. Thank you. Councillor Kent, would you like to speak to the recommendation? Yes, just put simply, I see this as a long-term vision, which is put in concrete, which can be built on in the future. And yes, some people have used certain words to describe this, but it just is so important to our community. Water, we've got to have it to survive, get too much of it, causes flooding. So we've just got to manage the whole lot for the, lot, for the long term. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Kent. Would anyone else like to speak to or against this recommendation? Councillor Lark. Thank you. This, this is an excellent plan when coupled with the previous agenda item relating to water management. That said, I indicated earlier today during budget discussions that significant budget and long-term financial plan priorities remain a challenge. It will, will be essential that the next council has a crucial conversation with our community regarding whether priority funds need to be allocated for basic and essential infrastructure, including local roads, footpaths, and in this instance, drainage. In this regard, I am sure ratepayers in my own ward, incorporating South Dudley, Wampaggy, Cape Patterson, Harmers Haven and Inverloch, and other wards as well, recognise there is much work to be done in these townships, with an early estimate of up to $30 million needed across our shire to bring existing drainage up to a reasonable standard, let alone the need to identify and address unsightly and inadequate open drainage systems, local road issues and footpaths. The next council needs to focus on these issues in future budgets and long-term financial plans. Councillor Lark, if I could yes. ask you not, not to speak to the next council, please, just speak to the, the point. There needs to focus, there needs to be a focus on these issues in future budgets and long-term financial planning. And I apologise to our community that not enough has been done by this council to address these long-term and fundamental council core services and legacies. Thank you. Would anyone, thank you, Councillor Lark. Would anyone else like to speak to or against this motion? No? Okay, Councillor Whelan, would you like to close or put it to a vote? Just in responding to Councillor Lark's comments, this is about having the data set that allows us to uh, deliver those sorts of uh, initiatives and it sets a standard for achieving an existing subdivisions, as was said earlier in, a, in another debate. Uh, we are stuck with those uh, subdivisions that may well be in places that if you were, you know, starting from now would, wouldn't get off the ground, but it's to achieve a three-star rating in those areas. 
which is actually preserving the integrity of the building. So no, I think this is work that is actually looking to achieve exactly what uh, Councillor Lark was talking about in terms of a sensible economic approach to managing drainage and improving it to a level that's acceptable across the Shire. Thank you, Councillor Will, and we'll put it to a vote. All in favour of the recommendation as it reads. Councillor Kent, Fullerton, Rothfield, Lesserve, Tassari, Alice, Whelan, Brown and Lark. Carried. Item number H6, Phillip Island entrance roundabout designs to be introduced by Mr Stefani. Thank you, Mr Mayor. The purpose of this report is to seek Council's endorsement of the roundabout designs for the Willamai Beach Road and Back Beach Road roundabouts and to approve funding of $113,000 ex GST from the proposed 2021 budget towards the first stage of upgrades to the roundabouts. The designs were presented to councillors in a briefing in May and Regional Roads Victoria are currently constructing the roundabouts and the existing contract allows for concrete only. In order to achieve an outcome which is more in line with the objectives of the entry to Phillip Island project, new expenditure is required to upgrade the amenity of the roundabouts to include landscaping and other pavement treatments. This report recommends that council endorses the designs and allocates $113,000 in the 2021 draft budget for Regional Roads Victoria to upgrade the amenity of the roundabouts at Willamai Beach Road and Back Beach Road on Phillip Island. Thank you, Mr Mayor. Thank you, Mr Stefani. Can I have somebody move and second this recommendation? Councillor Fullerton and seconded Councillor Whelan. Councillor Fullerton. Thank you, Mr Terry. Um, the long-awaited roundabouts are finally taking shape. Um, I was, I was, I've been a bit shocked that this cost was not included in the actual 10 nine or $10 million for each of the roundabouts, but um, clearly it hasn't been, but uh, yeah, I'm happy to have it allocated now so that we can actually get some work done and um, have them finished and finalized and the entrances to those areas can be presented as well as they should be. Thank you, Councillor Fullerton. Councillor Whelan. Thanks, Mr. Mayor. Yes, echo those comments. You wonder why they'd spend that amount of money on such, uh, large infrastructure and, and not do the job properly that suits the area. But I'm of a mixed mind there. And, and of course, we can come in and, and do that work. And of course, it's important to do that work now. Otherwise, once those roundabouts are done, they'll just be sealed off concrete with, with you know, an, an opportunity to actually make them more presentable. I say that in the context that we can't build expectations too much, but because at the end of the day, they are road infrastructure and safety is, is going to be something that will be paramount. So it may not meet everyone's expectations of wonderful uh, uh, statuettes, presentations for Phillip Island, but it will be, be much better. And uh, uh, the designs that the architect, landscape architect has come up with are good within the constraints of what he's working with, the environment of what he's working with. My understanding of this is that we're we're talking about that infrastructure now because now is the time to do that while they're doing the construction and that the um, the rest of the work will, will come at a second stage, which will be plantings and those sorts of things. Thank you, Councillor Wheel and Councillor Rothfield. Thanks, Mr Mayor. Yes, I, I uh, endorse the, the comments made by Councillor Fullerton. It's, it's quite remarkable at, at such a huge budget that the uh, uh, rural, regional Rose Victoria have $25,000 put aside to concrete the roundabout. Um, this does actually um, endeavour to, to produce a sense of arrival. I don't, um, I'm sure we won't have any statues or I'm not sure what Councillor Whelan was getting at there, but um, it should at least give us a sense of arrival into our beautiful island. So, uh, yeah, I think it's terribly important to go for it. Thank you, Councillor Rothfield. Councillor Lasseur. Uh, thank you, Mr Mayor. I think my understanding of this is that you could get the stock stand at Roundabout that's concreted and just looks pretty ordinary, but this is Council's opportunity to have the presentation of these roundabouts um, put into our vision, and um, this is us putting our stamping our name on it. So, look, I think it's, it's really important because there is a sense of arrival at Phillip Island needed. So, um, yeah, I endorse uh, the allocation of the money. Thank you, Councillor Lasseur. Would anyone else like to speak to or against this, Councillor Kent? 
I, I thought I'd better make a quick comment. As we all know, that San Remo is the actual entry to Phillip Island. But uh, I, I, putting aside the 25,000 uh, and so forth, I, I'd actually like to thank Regional Roads Victoria. I think we're uh, in regards to the construction at the moment, we're all apprehensive about uh, uh, traffic flow and Regional Roads has displayed to us that they can construct a, a roundabouts um, with not affecting the, the traffic flow at the moment. And I would suspect in the very near future, if they haven't already, though, the, uh, the traffic road will go on to the half of the roundabout that's under construction at the moment. So yes, they've uh, got rid of our concerns. Thank you, Councillor Kent. Would anyone else like to speak to or against this recommendation as it reads? No, Councillor Fullerton, would you like to close or put it to a vote? I would like to make one comment in relation to Councillor Kent's um, visionary statement just then. The, um, we've all been concerned in relation to the construction period, and I have to comment that at the moment it's quite disastrous. It's quite the Willamite turn up is very, very dangerous, and um, I've addressed that with our our council managers, and they're trying to get Regional Roads Victoria to rectify it as we speak. But um, yeah, it's uh, it's far from the safest roundabout there at the moment, or the safest safest turning point. But uh, no, look, I thank the other councillors for support on it, and um, just look forward to it all being finished and uh, looking magnificent. Thank you, Councillor Fullerton. We'll put it to a vote. All in favour of the recommendation as it reads. Councillor Kent, Fullerton, Rothfield, Lasseur, Tassari, Ellis, Whelan, Brown and Lark. Carried. Oops, I'll turn the page, hang on. Item number H7, Waste Services Contract Variation and to be presented by Ms Kennedy. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. The purpose of this report is to seek, <clears throat> to seek a variation to the waste services collection contract and the management of the Inverloch and Wonthaggy transfer station contract. These services are undertaken on behalf of council by Wonthaggy Recyclers Proprietary Limited. These variations for a period of two years from the 1st of July, 2020 to the 30th of June, 2022 and allow for the continuation of Bass Coast recyclable material to be collected and processed while the materials and recycling industry and state government establish longer term changes, including a shift to a circular economy. This report recommends that council approves the variations for one, up to 1.716 million, um, including GST for council's waste collection services contract and two, up to 114,155 to Council's management of the Inverloch and Montaggy transfer station contract. Both of these will be for the period of the 1st of July 2020 to the 30th of June 2022. Thank you, Mr Mayor. Thank you, Ms Kennedy. Can I have uh, Councillor Whelan and seconded Councillor Rockfield. Councillor Whelan. Um, yeah, in speaking to the to the resolution, I, I want to actually firstly challenge the notion in the report that this is a China ban. China might have a lot to answer for in 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 their more recent uh, uh, behaviour, but in this this was one that was telegraphed to the Australian industry that they were going to increase the standard of what they required from the waste they were importing at that stage, and the local industry didn't respond, nor did the government for that matter. This is really important, and this is beyond the control of Wonthaggy Recyclers or Council that we're talking about here. This is an increase in the cost of recycling that has been imposed by Busy, who are effectively operating in a monopoly uh, situation in this regard. The, the alternative to not going down this path is that the recycling goes to landfill, which is absolutely, uh, from my point of view, not acceptable. We need to work with Wonthaggy Recyclers as a local business. I know they have ownership that extends beyond this region, but they are a local business employing local people. They are a partner with Bass Coast Council. This is really unfortunate. We need to be working our way forward towards a better solution as much as possible. But at this point in time, I, I think we're between a rock and a hard place. We need to actually work with our, uh, with our uh, contractor in this one uh, and, and, and approve the uh, variations. Thank you, Councillor Wheel and Councillor Rockfield. Thanks, Mr Mayor. 
nobody likes to spend more money than they have to. Nobody does. And and it's un as Councillor Whelan said, it is unfortunate this uh, this has come to this. But 2013 was when China actually advised the world that they were not going to take any more contaminated recycled materials. We had plenty of time, um, but it was all it was ignored. It was only in on in January 2018 that they really um, enforced the restrictions, that they had given the world notice. Um, you know, at this, we've been sending so much of our dirty, dirty rubbish um, and, and contaminated recycling to China. 1.25 million tonnes of it went, uh, recycled material went to China in 2016, 2017. Um, and it's, this is really a societal problem. We just have to get our act together. Um, and we have to uh, understand the value of what we have within our rubbish. And it, it's a huge issue, but we have to address it. You can't just go sending it off to, to I was going to say third world nations, but I don't think China sits in that. Um, yeah, I, I think that um, this the impact of the China, uh, the China solution, the, what they call the green sword now, I think it's called, um, it's meant that we have to deal with our own rubbish. It has seen a dangerous stockpiling. Um, of the, of the, um, the uh, recyclables uh, by cowboy operators. Um, one operator, SKM, a major operator, went into receivership last year. Um, and what's happened is that the competition has reduced. And of course, the cost has absolutely skyrocketed. There used to be a value in plastic scrap and low grade paper. It, and there used to be. It's plummeted. There's no way out of it. We have to pay more. If we have to, if we, um, cancel this contract and then go and revisit another contract, we will be paying way more. There's just no way out of it. We have to increase um, the payment that we make. We have to, I, um, I believe um, we're partners with this waste collection company and I think we have to actually step up and, and um, yeah, unfortunately accept the, the cost. Thank you, Councillor Rockfield. Would anyone else like to speak to or against Councillor Lark? Uh, firstly, I'd like to foreshadow an alternative motion, Mayor Tassari. Certainly, Councillor Lark. Well, um, I'll just... Uh, you'd like to... That's all. Thank you. Uh, would you like to speak to or against this uh, motion? Yes, I would. Thank you. Okay. Uh, one Thaggy Recycler. One Thaggy Recyclers, which is 50% owned by a major corporation in Cleanaway Waste Management, has recently negotiated a two-year extension to its contract with Visi, involving a gate fee increase from $100 to $145 per tonne for recycled materials. In my view, an unacceptable increase of 45%. My opinion is that given one Thaggy Recyclers it, my opinion is that given one Thaggy Recyclers independent action, it should take responsibility for its decision taken in advance of any council consideration and perhaps absorb in whole or part the costs which it proposes to pass on. As in my view, it appears that it has acted unilaterally and without prior imprimatur of council and with the expectation that council will agree to the increased costs without question or negotiation. However, if council elects to pass this variation motions, to be completely open, I would like our community to note that the increased waste costs associated with this variation is likely to be passed on to ratepayers. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Lark. Would anyone else like to speak to or against this? Councillor Kent. Um, my my concerns are that this is just the the start of the uh, the long term story. I want the state government to uh, to step up. I just don't think that they've done enough for for us. There's huge funds being held in reserve, and nothing seems to be utilised at the moment. In the future, the community's got to look at itself, and now, in, in regards to recyclables, we've got to produce a cleaner product. It's quite clear that some of these plastics are, are just not usable at the moment. 
there'll be arguments for the future about energy production. And again, that will be another argument in the future. And I'm not saying that's the way to go, but it will be part of the picture in, you know, in, in the future. This is just a short term decision, I believe, uh, because the recyclables aren't going to go away and the community needs to address this and speak up as to what they're prepared to do, either reduce it, use it for another uh, use, or, or come up with some idea, get the state government to come forth too. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Kent. Would anyone else like to speak to or against this recommendation? Councillor Brown. Councillor Brown, just before you start, can I just ask you to raise your hand higher because I'm only just seeing the, you at the bottom of the screen and your hand's low and I only just caught it then, so just for future reference. Yeah, I'll try and do that, thank you, um, yeah, look, If this uh, variation gets passed, it's going to be picked up with an increase to the garbage charge. And I believe the increase is over 10% in one year, which is a massive increase. And it's, it's way beyond any CPI indexes or anything like that. It's at a time when the economy is actually shrinking, not getting bigger. Um, and so you can't just say, look, you know, council will pay for it because it is, it is paid for by the ratepayers and it gets picked up by them. So it's a massive percentage increase and I'm not happy about it at all. Um, I want to... Um, throw something out there. I imagine that uh, under the current contract, um, well, I think recyclers get paid um, per, per rateable property that gets a curbside pickup. Now, I have a small business here in One Thaggy, um, which I haven't been able to operate for, since at least March due to COVID-19. So I have three full-size bins that I haven't been putting out. And I bet there are hundreds of businesses across the Shire that are in the same boat. So in other words, they either haven't been putting their um, curbside collections out or what they have been putting out is a significantly reduced volume. But yet I imagine that, you know, we're still paying one thing recyclers for the pickup for those properties. So I think if there is any variation to the contract, it should be subject to an audit um, of those figures. In other words, how, how many, how many uh, properties are being picked up at the current time, especially the town centres and especially the businesses? I, I think that sort of, that's a factor that needs to be taken into consideration. Um, I, I'm not happy that council covers 100% of the, the variation. Um, I think another, another thing to consider would be a 50-50 split. Um, I think there needs to be a bit of shared pain. I don't think it's fully up to council. Um, and I'm not happy with the state government. As, as Councillor Rothfield said before, um, I think it was 2013, China advised that the change to the recycling industry. State governments had years and years and years to start putting something into place to deal with this. Um, and in my mind, they've done nothing and they need to be called out. Um, they've got the sustainability fund. I don't know exactly how much is in there at the moment, but it's probably still hundreds of thousands of dollars. I don't understand why more of that money is not used to create, you know, very large recycling facilities or what have you to deal with this problem. So I'm not happy with the state government either. Um, um, but for me, yeah, I, this this is um, I'm not going to support this variation to the contract. Thank you, Councillor Brown. Would anyone else like to speak to or against Councillor Lasserv? You got in just in, just before Councillor Fortson. So, so could I just clarify whether or not um, uh, there could be a point three added to it that an audit is done on Councillor Brown's point? I mean, the Councillor you, Whelan's... Do you, you want to put an amendment forward, Councillor Lasseau? Um, it's just a consideration for uh, point three to be added to it, not um, just that what Councillor uh, Brown stated about the unordered. 
that, that we've got an officer's recommendation in front of us if you would like to make an amendment to that. But, uh, couldn't Councillor Brown ask Councillor Whelan to add an, a third point without a, a total yes. amendment? Councillor it doesn't change it. It's an officer's it recommendation. And I, and I just remind uh, you at this point that there is foreshadowed from Councillor Luck, but it's an officer's recommendation. If you would like to try uh, put forward uh, an amendment, we could, uh, we'd have to get that moved and seconded. Otherwise, we're voting on the recommendation as it reads. Okay. Thank you. Would you like to speak to the motion, Councillor Lusser? No, Councillor Fullerton. Thank you, Mr. Uh, look, I'm, I'm troubled by it. I understand exactly what Julian's saying. Um, the, the passing on of the full amount is a concern. I also have concerns in relation to the possible cancellation of a contract and having to renegotiate and just what that may bring and the cost to our community there. Um, Councillor Lark's amendment, I haven't actually heard, but um, I, I wouldn't Council, mind knowing. Councillor Fullerton, can we just speak to the motion as it reads at the moment? Um, yeah, look, I, I, I'm not quite sure which way to go with that. Okay, thank you, Councillor Fullerton. Uh, would anyone else like to speak to or against the recommendation as it reads? No, Councillor Whelan, would you like to close and put it to a vote? Thanks, Mr. Thanks, Mr. Mayor. Yes, it's one thing to be cross with the um, government and the industry, and it should be both, uh, for their past performance. But the, the government is moving on the circular economy. They're moving on a four bin system and, and, and doing extensive work in that area through sustainability and the like. So. I, I don't echo those uh, criticisms of government in the current period, but rather I think they uh, got caught, caught napping in the past. But to suggest that uh, the contractor should absorb costs out of this 45% uh, increase in their costs to put these to the recyclers is an actual cost. Now, I think in terms of the audit, our officers haven't sat on their hands on this. They've been talking to the contractors to suggest otherwise. Uh, I don't think is correct. And, and, and to suggest that uh, if nothing it can be agreed or negotiated without it actually coming before a council meeting is, is similarly naive and, and doesn't really take account of, of council's role in governance. Um, so the, the point about this is if it, if it didn't go to busy, there was nowhere else for it to go. That, that contract needed to be made. They, they weren't presented with a range of options that they could cherry pick. So our costs, if we didn't do this, were going to be much stronger by it going to landfill. Our costs were going to be higher. I don't like the fact that, um, that I pay it through my garbage charge or waste charge or other people in, in, in my ward have to do that as well. But that's the fact of life. Someone has to pay for it. And uh, if it was the contractor, there's a very good chance that the contractor couldn't wear it. You'll probably end up with a force majeure. So uh, if we need to consider those sorts of things. This isn't straightforward, and it's, a, it's all very well to be hairy-chested and, and start saying that the contractor should accept these costs, uh, but go back and look at the original contract, and we'd probably end up in a force majeure situation, which I think was being touted at the time. So no, I, I think we should go ahead with it. I think we should work with a contractor, but we should be working to see how we can handle this material better into the future, working within the circular economy uh, system working with West Gips, uh, with the Gippsland Waste and Recovery. I'm not sure I got their name right, but anyway, there's a lot of work for us to do, and I know we've got very good people working on it. Thanks, Mr. Mayor. Thank you, Councillor Wheel, and we'll put it to a vote. All in favour of the recommendation as it reads. Sorry, hang on before we vote. Sorry, just seeking some clarification. Councillor Lark, can I just ask if the motion is lost, will you be moving your foreshadowed motion? Yes, I will. Thank you. All in favour of the recommendation as it reads. 
Councillor Rockfield, Councillor LaServe, Councillor Ellis, Councillor Whelan, and against Councillor Kent, Councillor Fullerton, Councillor Tassari, Councillor Brown, Councillor Lark, lost. Councillor Lark, I now ask you to put forward your uh, alternate. I'm looking for it, I found it. And I also, uh, please let councillors, uh, I need to reconfirm now as we put this on screen, once it's on screen, that we can see you all, which I actually cannot right now. Okay, so I now ask uh, all councillors to reconfirm that you can see the alternate motion and you can still see each other. So, a uh, hey, hey, Councillor Kent. Yes, I'm okay. Councillor Fullerton. Yes, I can see it. Councillor Rothfield. Yep. Councillor LaServe. Can't hear you, Councillor yep, LaServe. Yep, yep, I can. Oops. Yeah, I can see it. What happened? <laughs> Sorry. Oh, wrong one. Sorry. Yeah, yeah, sorry. I just uh, dropped it. <clears throat> I feel my screen now. This is brand new to us sharing sharing these. So there we go. So I'm going to have to start again. I do apologise, but. Um, can we just confirm that you can see the, uh, the alternate on your screen and you can see the other eight councillors? Councillor Kent? I can see all. Fullerton? Yes. Rothfield? Yep. LaServe? Yes. Alice? Yes. Dylan? Yep. Brown? Yep. Lark. Yes. Councillor Lark, I now ask you to move your your uh, recommendation as it reads and not speak to it, please, at this point. Yes. The council defer consideration of the waste services contract variation, impact of recycling industry processes subject to receiving a report at a future council meeting that provides advice in relation to options to renegotiate with Wampaggy recyclers over the $45 per tonne increase and identifies the risks associated with renegotiating the existing contract. Thank you. Can I have somebody second that motion, please? Councillor Brown, Councillor Lark, would you like to speak to that motion, please? Yes, I, I think it just gives us some breathing space to uh, perhaps negotiate a better outcome on behalf of our ratepayers who ultimately bear the costs of these uh, increased uh, tonnage charges. And uh, I just reiterate a major concern that I had um, in that Wampaggy Recyclers appears to have acted independently of uh, any uh, council consideration and simply look to pass on the cost without council having an option to negotiate or consider itself. I'm talking about council and council alone in that regard. Thank you, Councillor Lark. Councillor Brown. Yeah, thanks, Mr. Mayor. Um, look, I'd, I'd just say that, uh, you know, I, I think it's sensible to do this. Uh, hopefully, uh, we can consider it at the next meeting. Um, that would be my hope. Um, but I think there needs to be a bit of shared pain on this. I won't say, you know, exactly what figures they should be, but I think I think there does need to be some shared pain and I think it needs to be a fair and equitable outcome between the cost to council, which is effectively a cost to the ratepayer, and the cost to one third year recyclers. Thank you, Councillor Brown. Would anyone else like to speak to or against this motion as it reads? Councillor Whelan. 
Mm -hmm. I have a question, Mr. Mayor, if I may, of the CEO. I think it's pertinent to uh, to a, a claim that's been made by Councillor Lark that uh, one thaggy recyclers acted unilaterally in this respect. Uh, were, were our officers aware of that negotiation and was it done to ensure that we could continue to uh, dispose of our recycling as recycling rather than landfill? Uh, Ms. Swasty, would you like to respond to that? Through the mayor. Yeah, not that one. Through the Mayor, there's been significant engagement and consultation with Wanthaggy recyclers uh, in preparation of this report. Doesn't answer and my question with respect, Mr and Mayor. Sorry, Councillor Wilmer. Doesn't answer my question. My question is, were we aware of the, re uh, the renegotiation that was occurring with Busy? Through the Mayor, I'd need to seek um, feedback from uh, uh, from Miss Kennedy, and we may need to take that on notice. Can we ask Miss Kennedy? Uh, Councillor Whelan, would uh, you like to redirect your answer, uh, your question to Miss Kennedy, and if she is available to respond, if not, we'll take it on notice. Miss Kennedy. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Through the Mayor. Um, we have been in negotiations with Wonthaggy Recyclers and we have been looking at um, the, the pricing of the um, previous tenderers to see where this would sit. Our advice was that um, Wonthaggy Recyclers were the lowest um, contractors at the time um, and that going forward, um, we've ne negotiated the, the price based on the um, contract that Wonthaggy Recyclers have had to enter in with Busy. So what we've got is um, what we consider to be a fair and reasonable variation to the contract based on all the information provided to council officers. Yes. <clears throat> Councillor Wheeler, would you like to speak to or against this recommendation? Yes, this motion, it's a, sorry. I, think, I, I think it's a, um, it, it's a poor effort um, and uh, it, it doesn't demonstrate the partnership we should have with our uh, with our um, contractors. This notion that nothing can happen unless it comes to council, that we would have had recycling being dumped out at Granville. That's, that's the upshot of, of that attitude. If, if you say nothing can happen unless it comes here for approval, we have to have some oper operational flexibility. It's why we have a CEO who has a team of people who, who actually know what they're talking about. Now, I, I'm, I'm quite appalled by this. Thank you, Councillor Whelan. Would anyone else like to speak to or against the motion as it reads? Councillor Rothfield. Yes, it's a bit disappointing. Um, I, I agree with Councillor Whelan. I, I think that, you know, we've got experts and we do have experts. Are, are we really beginning to micromanage everything? Um, we know that there is an increase. We know that there's a reduced co um, competitive nature in, in, in the recycling industry. We, we know that we're going to be up for money and we know that if we don't actually pay the extra, it's going to go to landfill. So we've just got to understand what the repercussions are. So at least go in this with, into this with open eyes. Um, if you're happy to accept that, okay, but uh, personally I'm not. Thank you, Councillor Rothfield. Would anyone else like to speak to or against? Councillor Ellis. Thank you, Mayor Tazari. Back in 2018, when suddenly the price went up, and we were affected by it. There were a number of councils that had to put recycled material into landfill all over Victoria. We were lucky we didn't have to do that. At the time, I had a number of constituents come to me with concerns that we would end up doing that. And I made them a commitment that we would not go down that path. I'm committed to do whatever we have to do to make sure that we put the minimal amount of landfill into that Grandfield tip as possible. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Ellis. Would anyone else like to speak to or against this motion? Councillor Kent. I, I personally just wanted to make it clear that um, we, well, I and I'd say we fully support a local employ, employer who employs local employees. Um, the last thing we want to see is a local industry go under. Um, and look, I'm, I fully support this motion in that 
my feeling is we may just end up with the original motion, but I don't think it hurts to identify as any risks. We are going to get a, I would anticipate we'll get a kickback from the community. Here's more costs, more costs for the community, more costs for their rubbish bin collection. We need to be able to sell this with, with full information to, to the community. If the community is fully informed, I hate that word transparency, but if they have the full information, then we'll carry them with us with our ultimate decision. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Kent. Would anyone else like to speak? Councillor Fordson. Yeah, um, look, we may well end up with the original motion, but um, I think it's only going to be a month and um, let's have a look at it. There's probably some information there we all need to see. and. Um, um, yeah, I'm, I'm happy to have it adjourned for a month. Thank you, Councillor Fullerton. Would anyone else like to speak to or against this recommendation, uh, this motion, sorry? No, Councillor Lark, would you like to close or put it to a vote? Yes, yeah, certainly. Uh, I'm fully supportive of recycling and not sending um, item materials to, to landfill. But in this instance, it hasn't been open and transparent in terms of uh, a briefing to councillors or a briefing to the full council in relation to a 45% increase in uh, the visit costs. So I think this study, whilst it may ultimately reach the same conclusion or some negotiated outcome, it needs to be known by our community that we're looking after their ratepayer dollars and not just accepting flow on of costs without negotiation. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Lark. All those in favour of... Sorry, Councillor Whelan. There was a state, uh, an incorrect statement made there by Councillor Lark that we hadn't been briefed on the increase in cost. If he reads the report, it says exactly that, that we had an increase from $100 to $145. That's on page 64 of the report. Thank you, Councillor Whelan. We'll continue on and put it to a vote in favour of the motion. As it reads on your screen, please raise your hands. Councillor Kent, Councillor Fullerton, Kasari, Alice, Brown and Lark. And against? Councillor Rothfield, Lasserve, Whelan. Carried. Item number H8. And we're just taking the, the screen off. Do I need to? No. Item number H8, significant roadside vegetation management plan to be introduced by Ms. Kennedy. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. The purpose of this report is to seek council endorsement of the review and update of the roadside vegetation management plan dated November 2003 and bring the document up to date with current legislation. The updated plan will provide a framework for consistent and strategic management of rural roadsides councillors are responsible for across Bass Coast Shire. The objectives of the plan are to protect roadside biodiversity and landscape values without compromising other essential functions of roadsides, such as roadside safety, fire management, and the provision of utilities and services. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Thank you, Ms. Kennedy. Can I have somebody move and second this recommendation as it reads? Somebody, Councillor Lathurve and seconded. Councillor Alice, Councillor Lathurve. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, look, the roadside uh, weed management is very important across the Shire, and uh, we have just increased it within the budget from 66,000 to 100,000 given um, the recommendation from the rural engagement group, uh, the farming that's a um, mostly the farming group coming together with council as an advisory group. It's, that's really only just um, will cover the contract for 50% um, of all roadsides each year. So it's not really a very big budget for it. Look, I, I'm pleased that we've got a plan. It has increased. Uh, there's more to do. And in future uh, budget, I would hope that further allocations could be made to this significant part because it's a part of our presentation to tourism to our local community. 
Thank you, Councillor LaServe. Councillor Ellis. Thank you, Mayor Tazari. I can only add to what um, Councillor LaServe then. I think she made some very good statements. I'll just point out that given the amount of rural roads there are in Western Port Ward and the number of farmers we have up there, the integrity of the farms depends on the fact that weeds and that aren't spread along the roadside. I think it's very important that we do this properly. And I hope in future budgets we can find enough money so we can do both sides of the road every year, which would reduce a lot of our issues. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Alice. Councillor Whelan. Yes, I'd just like to say that um, I'm prepared to accept the report. I have a few concerns with it. I don't think it, um, it, it's quite written from the perspective really of preserving roadside vegetation because it takes into account all what wasn't all other things being equal or something um you know where, where there's impacts on road users we should also be considering behavioral changes in relation to road users speed limits and those sort of things it doesn't envisage that the way i see it the emphasis on weed management yeah that's important but it should be for the preservation from the perspective of the preservation of that vegetation and in fact, you might find where the weeds come from in the first place on the roadsides. So uh, that's people dumping rubbish. That's, people, that's actually migration from properties as well. So it's a two way street in that regard. But yeah, I'm prepared to accept this as a, bringing us into compliance with the current legislation. Uh, but ongoing, I would think it needs further work and uh, should be taking into account the absolute intrinsic value of that roadside vegetation and the importance of maintaining it from the species diversity perspective. Thank you, Councillor Whelan. Would anyone else like to speak to or against this recommendation? Councillor Lark. You're on mute, Councillor Lark. Still. Okay. Yeah, I, I just want to I just want to acknowledge that the report also talks about having a balance between um, the vegetation and and the safety of people. We've seen uh, a number of deaths through falling trees and so forth. So it's important uh, that that people be looked after from a safety aspect too. And and this report does uh, acknowledge that it it is a balance. Yeah. Thank you, Councillor Lark. Would anyone else like to speak to or against this recommendation? No, I'll go back to you, Councillor Lalasur. Would you like to close or put it to a vote? I'll put it to the vote, Mr Mayor. Thank you very much. All in favour of the recommendation as it reads, Councillor Kent, Fullerton, Rothfield, Lasur, Tassari, Ellis, Brown and Lark and against. And abstain. Okay, Gary. Councillor Whelan, you didn't vote at all. Um, I voted in my mind. Okay, so Gary. It's just throwing me for a second. Hang on, let me <laughs> Okay, order number H9, contract variation uh, to be presented by, uh, sorry, Contract variation for environmental monitoring of landfill sites to be presented by Ms. Kennedy. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. The purpose of this report is to seek a variation for the environmental monitoring contract C19015 for the landfill sites at Grantville, Wonthaggy, and Real. These services are undertaken on behalf of Council by Mineheart Infrastructure and Environment Proprietary Limited. The contract is for three years from the 1st of October 2019 to September 2022. The variation is required to meet additional monitoring or reporting to comply with EPA approved aftercare management plans and environmental management plans for the landfill sites. As part of its preparation works, Mineheart noted discrepancies between the requirements of the contract and the EPA approved aftercare management plans and environmental monitoring programs. This report recommends that Council approve the variation for up to $171,943, excluding GST, to Council's environmental monitoring contract. The variation has been calculated for the updating, for updating the environmental monitoring programs for each site um, 
and as provided in the existing contract using the existing rates. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Thank you, Ms. Kennedy. Can I have somebody please move and second this Councillor Lark? You'd like to move and second? No, no, uh, I have not. Um, Mayor Tassari, I have an alternative motion. Okay, Councillor Lark, you have an alternative motion. Can we put that up on screen? Can I just confirm with a show of hands that you can all see the screen and each other? Councillor Serve and Brown and Whelan, you haven't got your hands up. Can you see the screen and each other? Councillor Brown, you can't? No. Meeting yeah, adjourned. Meeting adjourned. Just pause for a second, please, while we wait for...
Thank you, everybody, and welcome back. Apologies for the IT difficulties. We think we have them all fixed. Can I please just reconfirm that we can all see the motion in front of us and also the other eight councillors? A show of hands, please. Councillor Kent, Fullerton, Rockfield, Lasserve, Sari, Ellis, Whelan, Brown, and Luck. Councillor Lark, can I please ask for you to, to uh, read your motion as it reads there without speaking to it, please. Thank you, Mayor Tassari. That Council defer consideration of the contract variation environmental monitoring of landfill sites subject to receiving a report providing advice to Council regarding how the procurement process undertaken by contract C190015 may have been improved and identifies the risks associated with potentially terminating the existing contract and retendering. Thank you, Councillor Lark. Can I have somebody second that motion, please, as it reads? Councillor Brown. Councillor Lark, you may now speak to your motion. Yes, uh, from my reading, the original tender specification, which was in November 2019, appears to have been less than optimal and under the requirements uh, required in these circumstances. And I would rather go back to the market instead of compounding the problem with a significant cost variation so soon after the original contract was let in November 2019. Whilst it was an e even playing field for all tenderers at that time, with the particular specification that was uh, under consideration, the specification was not correct and not full and complete. And I, I suggest that this course of going back to market will ensure an equal and fair process for all previous and new prospective tenderers. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Lark. Councillor Brown. Thanks, Mr Mayor. Uh, yeah, look, I had real concerns uh, over such a, such a large variation to the original contract. Uh, I think, I think, I mean, the original contract was uh, for around two hundred fifty nine thousand, and we're we're looking at a variation for about one hundred and seventy two thousand. So, like a percentage increase of over sixty percent in in less in less than a year's time from the contract date. So that's a very short period of time to go to such a huge variation. Um, and so that's concerning to me. Um, you know, I don't, I don't have a problem <clears throat> when you, you put the costs up front uh, in the original contract, and if it's more, then it's more, but, but everybody knows about it. And it's, it's um, you know, you don't get um, shocked down the road. But uh, yeah, this this is a real concern for me. So I'm very happy to see um, a further report and that we we give this matter some more consideration. Thanks. Thank you, Councillor Brown. Would anyone else like to speak to or against this recommendation, Councillor Kent? I Sorry, uh, fully... Sorry Councillor Kent. I just need to clarify. Uh, speak to or against this motion. I'll I'll speak um, again. I'll speak against this current motion that's in front of me. Please that's go okay. for it, Councillor Kent. Um, look, we we have been briefed by the council officers that there's uh, there's issues on both sides here in regards to the information that was supplied, uh, additional information that's been picked up by our auditors' report requesting and uh, extra and that that was completely out of anybody's hands um, and it's been explained to us by council officers that, uh, that they've worked out a formula as a percentage of the original tenders that, that were supplied uh, and yes the increase is 172,000 and look we're about a year into it now nearly a year into it so I can I please have a, um, a question answered possibly that I take it that this extra 172 will be 
uh, over the next two years. And I'm just wondering what that works out per, per rate payer. Um, if, have we got that figure at all? Uh, because because I can see that it's, it's added to the garbage. It, it, I would suggest it will be added to the garbage charge. So I'm just wondering what we're looking at per rate payer. Um, just uh, asking Miss Kennedy, would you have that information in front of you or would you like to take that on notice? Mr. Bear, I have it. Uh, $4.19. Uh, th thank you very much for that answer. And I would suggest that, uh, yes, it would be good to get feedback from the council officers in the future as to how we could do this better, but uh, I'm certainly in agreement with the original motion. Thank you, Councillor Kent. Would anyone else like to speak to or against the motion as it reads? Councillor Whelan. Thanks, Mr Mayor. Yes, I concur with those comments made by Councillor Kent. Um, we, we are right to uh, review why certain aspects of <laughs> Uh, aftercare management plan and environmental management plans weren't included in the request for tender. Um, but this is a navel gazing proposal we have before us. It uh, that takes us nowhere. Uh, it that does cover that aspect of review, but I think we can do that by virtue of a question to the CEO to ask that, in fact, uh, that matter be followed up and we'd be given an answer. We don't need a resolution of council to do that. Um, the point is that uh, in RFPs and the like, things are omitted all the time. You try and minimise it, but it happens. It happens and you need to deal with it. Um, so the question, I do actually have a question that arises out of that, whether in fact the uh, new work under the AMPS and, and uh, IMPS were in fact costed on the pricing model that was given in their uh, tender, sub uh, their submitted tender, and I expect it was, but that's, I'd, I'd like to hear from Ms. Kennedy, perhaps if, if she can answer that part of that, that question. Yes, through the Mayor, um, that's correct. So um, the pricing was based on their rates in the, the con contract. Um, and to answer the previous question, it is for the life of the contract, as was asked by Councillor Kent previously. So it's that, that additional variation is for the three the, the rest of the contract. Thank you, Mr. So, Mr. so, Mr. Mayor, the point is that the, the, this contract is priced according to the uh, prices submitted by the tenderers at the time. Now, it, it's work that wasn't anticipated, but it's, it's priced according to something that was set under tender conditions. And that's important. It's also important that it was the, uh, the contractor that, arose, that, that raised this issue. So it shows, goes for their thoroughness. And I think that's commendable. I understand from the officers, they're very happy with Minehart. They're doing a great job. Now, a key point here, we could terminate this contract. Of course we could. And we'll face contract termination charges. We'll also then go to someone else on the, on the, on the order of uh, merit for the tender. There was a more costly um, tender. Yeah, this, this, is, this is fanciful, this, this, this resolution. It, uh, it, it should be voted down. Thank you. Councillor Whelan, Councillor Rothfield. Thanks, Mr. Mayor. <clears throat> well, Ms. Uh, Councillor Whelan's basically covered what I was going to say. Uh, Mineheart is a well-respected company in this in this field. Um, large tendering processes, they, this happens. It happens that, that there might be omissions, or errors perhaps in, in, in the specs sent out. And um, as Councillor Lark said, it was a level playing field in the beginning. This is, um, it's not that unusual. Uh, the cost per um, rate power, as I, as I understand it, for the environmental monitoring is $4.19 per annum. Um, it's not a huge amount of money. Um, however, um, I think to defer this right now is, is sort of, it is silly. It's wait, time wasting and uh, I don't, I'm not sure we'll get anything out of it. Thank you, Councillor Rothfield. Would anyone else like to speak to or against? Councillor Lasseur. Um, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Look, the point I want to make in, in this is that the, uh, the variation is um, is for the period of to the 30th of September 2022, allowing for Council to continue to meet its environmental compliance obligations. So, look, 
I just think that we, we just can't, we have to meet those obligations. So I just think uh, deferring it and trying to even in a, a alternative motion talking about potential termination, the existing contract and retendering is just, just not on. Thank you, Councillor Lesser. Would anyone else like to speak to or against this motion? Councillor Fullerton, you got in just ahead of Councillor Ellis. Yeah, thank you. I, I just have concerns at the 66% increase. Um, am I correct in that figure? You did the sums, Councillor Fullerton. I'm trusting you are. Yeah, I was trusting my trusty calculator. But um, yeah, look, I, I don't really understand a 66% increase um, for a contract that was only let last year. And um, I don't, um, as far as cancellation penalties for a contract, um, if we don't approve it, we're not cancelling their contract. So there's no, um, there's no cancellation fee. It would simply be, well, I don't know whose side that'd be on, but yeah, I, I, it's a hell of an increase to have to accept. Thank you, Councillor Fullerton. Councillor Ellis. The officer's report lists three options. Number one is the yes, support the original recommendation. Option number three predicts the discussion we're having now. And it says that if we go for a retender, we will risk not meeting our obligations in the monitoring. And I think the important thing, given the, I know that that's a lot of money and ratepayers' money, but given the fact that we need to meet our obligations, I think you'd find that would be the overriding consideration that rules my vote. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Alice. Councillor Lark, would you like to now close or put it to a vote? No, I'd, I'd like to just recap. Um, the original specification was flawed and that was discovered within one month of the contract being let. Even though there was a, uh, an even playing field for all tenderers in relation to the flawed specification, my, my view is that we should go back to the market and look after the 12 tenderers that put in their, their tender with the proper specification to ensure that due process and governance has been followed. Thank you, Councillor Lark. We'll put the motion as it reads on the screen to a vote. All in favour of the motion, please raise your hands. Councillor Brown and Councillor Lark and against Councillor Kent, Councillor Rothfield, Councillor Lesserve, Councillor Tassari, Councillor Ellis, Councillor Whelan. The motion is lost. We now go back to the original recommendation as it reads. Um, Mayor Tassari, Mayor Tassari, could I have Councilor a division Lark. on that one, please? Could I have a, a division, division, please? A division has been called. All in favour? Can we please put it back up on the screen? Uh, just the motion. Didn't you just do a count, Mr. Mayor? We don't need it back on screen, so we'll just do a count. All in favour of the motion that, that was before us, Councillor, please raise your hands. Councillor Brown and Councillor Lark and against Councillor Kent, Rothfield, Lesserve, Tassari, Ellis, Whelan. The motion is Councillor Fulton, are you voting or not voting? Are you a no? Abstaining? It's a no vote. Okay, so the motion is lost. Back to the original uh, recommendation, which has already been introduced by Ms. Kennedy. Can I have somebody move and second the original recommendation, please? Yeah. Councillor Rothfield and seconded Councillor Whelan. Councillor Rothfield. I think we've all basically said enough about this. Um, I'm just happy to move on with this. It's a mistake. Yes, we made a mistake. It's been picked up by a very good operator, which is mine heart, um, and we now have to move ahead. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Rothfield. Councillor Whelan? Ditto. Thank you, Councillor Whelan. Would anyone else like to speak to or against this recommendation? No, Councillor... Oh, you just got in there, Councillor Lark. Councillor Lark? 
I, I just want to reiterate that um, that the cost of this variation will flow on to ratepayers, and, and we you. need to be open in that regard. Thank you, Councillor Lark. Councillor, or anyone else like to speak to or against this recommendation? No, Councillor Rothfield, would you like to close or put it to a vote? I put it to a vote. All in favour of the recommendation as it reads? <laughs> Councillor Kent, Fullerton, Rothfield, Laserve, Tasari, Alice, Whelan, and against? Councillor Brown and Councillor Lark. Carried. And, and a division, oh, please. Sorry, Councillor. And, and a division, please. A division has been called. Uh, all in favour of the recommendation as it reads, please raise your hands. Councillor Kent, Fullerton, Rothfield, Laserve, Tasari, Alice, Whelan, and against. Councillor Brown and Councillor Lark. Okay, item number H10, Community Sports Infrastructure Stimulus Program to be introduced by Ms Kennedy. Thank you, Mr Mayor. The purpose of this report is to seek council approval to submit three funding applications to the Community Sports Infrastructure Stimulus Program to assist in funding the delivery of the 2020 Sports Pavilion Project, the 2020 Field Lighting Project, and the Guide Road Trail Project. The $68 million Community Sports Infrastructure Stimulus Program will support Victoria's economy by working with local government authorities, the Alpine Resort Boards and sporting organisations to fast track shovel ready community sport and active infrastructure projects across Victoria. The three funding applications proposed are for a total of seven projects. They include the Phillip Island Croquet Club Pavilion, the Wonthaggy Croquet Club Pavilion, the Wonthaggy Tennis Club Pavilion, lighting at the football Dalston and Imbolakilkunda football netball courts and Guy Road Trail. The total cost of delivering these projects is $6.09 million. The funding request through this program is $5,485 million. Council's contribution is $449,500 and the clubs are contrib contributing a total of $160,000 to the program. The Community Sports Infrastructure Stimulus Program provides council with an opportunity to access significant state funding to deliver key recreation projects that would not be possible through council's capital work program for many years. If successful, the grant provides the opportunity for council to provide high quality facilities to the community. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Thank you, Ms. Kennedy. Can I have somebody move and second that? Before we get to that point, we're just gonna put uh, up on screen, we're gonna share, I believe the original, uh, the, amend, uh, the original recommendation that was sent out, this has been amended by the officers. Um, so there is the, uh, the recommendation as it reads on screen. Can I please get a show of hands again that everyone can see the screen and also each other. Show of hands if I can. A show of hands, Councillor Brown. Meeting is adjourned. Please just wait while we wait for comms to uh, step in and tell us where away. It's all right now. I had to do the same thing as before. I've adjourned the meeting already, so we have to. Uh, yeah, I know. Every Sorry. every time, every time they put the um, um, brand, just just wait two seconds, please. The stream while we wait for the stream.
I move it. <laughs> Thank you, everybody. And apologies again for the IT issues. Uh, we're, we're working our way through them. So uh, before we went down last time, we've had this uh, recommendation uh, introduced by Miss Kennedy. Councillor Rothfield has just moved it. Councillor Fullerton has seconded. Councillor Rothfield, would you like to speak to? Yeah, thanks, Mr. Mayor. But first of all, can I just have some clarification? I didn't quite hear Miss Kennedy. Um, in the field lighting projects, Cowes Recreation Reserve was included in that, correct? Yes, through the Mayor, that is correct. Right, okay, thank you. I, I just didn't quite hear that. Um, well, this is a good news story um, and very, very exciting. And I guess the, the, the thing that we learn from this is how important it is that we um, continue to invest in plans and to ensure that we have shovel-ready projects in the event that opportunities such as this present themselves so we can grab them with both hands. Um, and, um, you know, I think also it shows how it's important to be flexible and ready to uh, just move when, as I say, these opportunities present themselves. This is um, an incredible um, uh, uh, thing for our shire that we, we're looking at um, an investment of, of over $6 million. And these are projects that would, we're sitting there waiting for funding. So we, we, this is just so exciting. Um, and as a, our grant request is five and a half and our contribution is for four and a half, so four, sorry, 450,000, which is really exciting. So yeah, I will absolutely um, support this recommendation. Thank you, Councillor Rothfield. Councillor Fullerton. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I was, I was actually putting my hand up to, I don't mind seconding, but I was actually putting my hand up to clarify something just before I speak. Um, the, there's an amended recommendation. So what's actually changed from our, the circulated recommendation? I can't see any great difference. Ms. Kennedy, would you like to uh, help out Council for the Mayor? Yes, um, through the Mayor, there was just um, some tidy ups in terms of the dollar amounts and the recommendation to ensure they included the right amount. Okay. Um, yeah, okay. Now, look, um, I have concerns about a couple of things which I would like to raise. I support the um, I support the program, but the football netball clubs that are being having the lighting provided, if we take the Phillip Island football netball club, it's, it's absolutely urgent because the lighting is so poor and with the hundreds and hundreds of young kids that are playing now, um, but I query the requirement for the club to put up 25,000. Um, at this point in time, all of our sporting clubs just simply don't have any income. There's no, they're getting no gate takings, they're get, and they've still got costs. Um, I, I'm concerned that there's an extra $25,000 bill to them. And it's not just the football netball club that are using the lighting, it's actually uh, the cricket club use the, the lights, there's the public use it um, when there are markets on the ground or whatever, the lighting is all used. It's used by a, a huge number of people and I query the requirement for the $25,000 um, commitment placed on the football netball club, which, as I said, is struggling immensely as all football netball clubs are currently. And that goes the same for Daleston and Kelly Bates. Uh, okay, I'm sorry. Yeah. Uh, thank you, Councillor Fullerton. You're showing your uh, your age there, Councillor Fullerton, calling them IK too. That's uh, a blast from the past, that is. Um, would anyone else like to speak to or against this recommendation? Councillor Kent. It's got IK on the thing. To, just clarifying what Councillor Fullerton ha has just stated, um, I'd like to ask the question. I cannot imagine that the council officers haven't approached these clubs. And I would suggest that I, that this has occurred and I'm hoping it has. Don't like asking questions where I don't know the answer, but I would suggest that these clubs have just jumped in and said, yeah, bring it on for this. We have got the money. We will find the money and what a fantastic return. So I, I think if I can get an answer to that. Certainly, I can confirm, Councillor Kent, that uh, all clubs and all all clubs, not just the lighting projects, but all clubs have uh, been spoken to and have agreed. 
Would you like to speak further, Councillor Kent, or is that it? No, that, that's great. I think it's, uh, I, I'd just like to also point out for future councillors that you have to support this. Uh, Councillor Kent, you know, Councillor Kent, let's not speak future councils. And okay, okay. Council. I, I just, I just like to support, show my support for future planning for uh, shovel ready projects as a councillor. Thank you, Thank you Councillor Kent. Councillor Lasseur. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, I too think it's a great, it's what an opportunity. Uh, just to answer Councillor Fullerton's query, the the specifications of the council being the host body of this, that all clubs, uh, all projects have to put in 10% because um, I did speak with the officers and as you'll see in the report on page 79 about the Coronella Angling and Boating Club and you all know that I went in hard to bat, went to bat for them. Uh, but there are other rounds so that, you know, the understanding that I've got with the officers that they'll be considered in the next round. So the, it is really important to have that shovel ready project, but the officers have worked with all those clubs and I'm really pleased to see um, some of those clubs as the croquet clubs in Phillip Island, Wonthaggy and the tennis club being having their needs met because often, you know, there are even smaller numbers in football clubs as far as their membership and their financial status. So it's really good that they've been able to be in it. As for the Guy Road uh, Trail, I think that's been on council's books for about 15 years. It hasn't been shovel ready for 15 years, but it, it's certainly been in our budget, our long-term budget. So yeah. it'll alleviate those stresses in our long-term financial plan. So he's hoping we get them all. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Lasseur. Would anyone else like to speak to or against this recommendation as it reads? Councillor Brown. I would. Uh, thanks, Mr. Mayor. Yeah, look, um, can I seek clarification first of all? I just want to confirm that the total amount that councils would put forward as its contribution is 449,000. Is that correct? Yes, can Through the mayor, that is correct. It is 449,500. So that is council's contribution. Um, and we are requesting a bit over 5.4 million of funding. Yeah. Thank you. So um, look, I'm gonna support this essentially because you almost can't say no. The, the way this funding works, and the, ter the terms are so uh, good for council that you, you almost can't say no, right? Normally with, with um, you know, grant, grants uh, from the state government, you have a ratio of one to one. So if we put forward a dollar, they'll give us a dollar. That's usually how it works or thereabouts. Uh, for this one, the state government have said, oh, well, if, if you give 10 cents, we'll give you 90 cents. And so how can you say no to that? And it's in response to COVID-19. So the state government said, okay, well, let's have stimulus spending, which I totally support. And I, I don't know anyone who doesn't say that you need some kind of stimulus spending at this time. But import, an important question is how much do you spend? And um, what do you spend it on? What are your priorities? Now, watching council over the last four years, my, my view is that if anything, our council overspends on sport and rec and underspends on things like infrastructure. Like in, in the last uh, couple of years, we have, we, have, um, we have seen so many sporting projects go forward and get up, whether it's at Inverloch or One Thaggy Netball Course or Daleston, uh, club rooms, you know, on the island, so many. We've spent millions and millions of dollars. And um, and it's kind of frustrating for me as a councillor wanting to, to, to spend big on infrastructure. The grants aren't necessarily there. Uh, not, not on a, a 10 cent to 90 uh, cent ratio. So um, the, way, the way this is all structured, you kind of can't say no. So I'll, I'll support it. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Brown. Would anyone else like to speak to or against the recommendation as it reads? Okay, Councillor Rockfield, would you like to close or put it to a vote? Well, uh, just a quick little close. Um, it is a response uh, to COVID-19, these grants are. We're only applying for them. We haven't got them yet. 
but one would assume that given how our shire has been devastated um, because of our bent towards the tourism, um, we, um, we might sort of stand a really good chance of getting this, um, and I'm hoping. You know, the, the data at the moment shows that there's 10% of jobs have been lost in Wonthaggi and Inverloch, and 12% and have been lost on Phillip Island. So, um, you know, we really need this sort of... Um, this sort of help and assistance, and if the local, if the state government's watching, please give it to us. And I'm sure they are watching, Councillor Rockfield. We'll, we'll put it to a vote. All in favour of the recommendation as it reads: Councillor Kent, Fullerton, Rockfield, Lasserve, Tassari, Ellis, Whelan, Brown, Lark. Carried. Item number H11, Gifts, Benefits and Hospitality Policy uh, to be presented by Ms Jones. Thank you, Mr Mayor. The purpose of this report is to seek council consideration of two draft policies, the draft Gifts, Benefits and Hospitality Policy and the draft Council Support and Resources Policy. The draft gifts policy provides for clarity on when gifts, benefits or hospitality can and cannot be accepted and the process for accepting, declining and recording gifts. The draft council support and resources policy sets out the resources and levels of support that council will provide councillors. Both policies are consistent with the Local Government Act 2020. Thank you, Mr Mayor. Thank you, Ms Jones. Very well read. Uh, ask for somebody to move and second. Councillor Whelan, you would like to move and second. Second. Uh, mine's an alternative motion, Mr Mayor. Councillor Whelan, you'd like to put forward an alternative. Can we get that up on screen? Here goes, here goes, here goes. Okay. So if we could just get a show of hands, if everybody can see the other eight cancellors and the screen. A show of hands. Cancellor will serve your hands out of screen, but yep. A show of hands. We can all see each other and Councillor Brown. Okay, Councillor Whelan, if you would like to read your motion, please, but not speak to. The, the part that's different from what's in the report is that Council 1 defers consideration of gifts, benefits and hospitality policy for consideration until after the Council election, taking into consideration the following. A, tighten the process for councillors and officers seeking clarification on the policy. Brackets refer 1.1 and 1.3 close brackets by specifying a single point of contact being the manager governance and property and requiring a record of the advice given. B, a council notwithstanding the gift disclosure threshold should not meet representatives of developers, gambling or hospitality businesses or other businesses or business organisations that may have business come before council other than through an assembly of councillors meeting. Councillors C, councillors must not accept hospitality or gifts of any kind from businesses other than where it is deemed by the Mayor that a tenant at a function is in council's interest. In that case, arrangement must be made with the CEO to arrange payment of costs, or otherwise the councillor must personally pay, cost, pay for the cost of any hospitality or benefit. And part two is adopt the council support and resources policy, superseding the provision of resources to councillors' policy. Thank you, Councillor Wheel. And can I have somebody second that? Uh motion as it reads. Councillor Rothfield, Councillor Whelan, would you like to speak to your motion? Thanks, thanks Mr Mayor. Yeah, look, um, apologies for it being a bit long, but I think there's some important principles that are addressed here. The first point is that the current or the draft policy that we've been presented with gives a range of options for providing advice. My view is that that should be tightly controlled and, and consequently uh, it's up to the, up to, I'd take advice from the CEO if she didn't agree with uh, the, the office I've nominated there, but um, but it should be a single point. That point should take uh, note of the advice given because it's a very important area of, uh, of council operations. And following that, I don't see why as a councillor I would take a gift uh, anyway. I, I disagree with the act, but so be it because I, it, it overrides me. <laughs> But it does have a $500 threshold there. I know it's over the term of, con uh, of council plus one year. But I, I personally don't see why uh, you would take a gift from a, uh, a business. There are reasons why a community group may uh, want to show its wares or something like that. You know, for example, a men's shed or something, something they've made. 
But really, uh, why would someone give you a gift? It's for influence. Therefore, my dear, you shouldn't accept it. And so what I'm also saying is that councillors shouldn't be meeting with those businesses where, where it's likely that that business would have or even may have uh, business coming before council other than through the assembly of councillors uh, uh, set up that's where, where you have officers present as reported on to a council meeting. Um, the, the part two of that resolution is consequential to me moving this. It's, it's the officer's recommendation that we adopt the, uh, the new council support and resources policy, which I support. Thank you, Councillor Wheel and Councillor Rothfield. Thanks, Mr Mayor. Um, the, oh, look, all, all points are that um, Councillor Whelan's proposed, I think, tightens uh, what is actually not a bad policy anyway, um, and let's improve it. I think that um, they're all important principles, as he said, and, and, and they do tighten it. I agree absolutely with the gifts, and I agree very much so with uh, not meeting with representatives of developers um, because oh, and the other businesses that he's talking about there. I think it improves and tightens what we have already. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Rothfield. Would anyone else like to speak to or against the uh, motion we have in front? Councillor Fullerton. Could I, um, before I comment, could I seek clarification on point B? Um, a councillor should not meet representatives of developers. Now, a developer, if you're putting a carport on your house, that's a development. Um, if you're building a high-rise building, you're, a, you're developing that. Um, is there a level of that development if somebody is planning a two lot subdivision on their land or whatever, should that person, you're saying that that an individual, if they approached a councillor, that we're not allowed to speak to them in, in relation to that. I just need clarification of that. I don't understand where it's going and I don't understand the purpose for it. So that's, I, I need clarification before I comment. Councillor Wheel, would you like to clarify those uh, questions? Yeah, look, um, Councillor, Fullerton, you raise an excellent point that isn't envisaged in this, and I think it needs to be taken account of. I think it can be taken account of. This this is going to come back to council as a draft policy, uh, and and you've clearly thrown up uh, an issue that may need to be addressed. What it's really envisaging is the sorts of briefings that we get uh, on major uh, subdivisions. Uh, I've also put in there gambling and hospitality, those sort of things. I'm talking about those things that may come before council. Now, mostly the sort of things you're talking about don't come before council. They're dealt with under delegation. And uh, why, well, one may need to ask, are those people seeking influence? In which case, uh, my view is we shouldn't talk to them outside of a uh, moderated uh, environment. But it's, a, it's fundamentally to make sure that where we have our interactions with developers and, and those other businesses I mentioned, that it's, a report, it's reported on. It's about transparency. It's reported on to a council meeting. Clearly, developers and, and the other businesses I mentioned have a right to speak to councillors. But all I'm uh, saying is to be able to moderate. Councillor Whelan, I... the reply. <laughs> yeah, sorry, I, I uh, lost my way for a minute then, so... Um, the answer, the, the term to that, I guess, Councillor Fullerton is yes, and also I note that it is only taking into consideration the following. Councillor Fullerton, would you like to speak? Uh, yeah, look, uh, in light of that, I'm happy with the recommendation, but not with ish, with, not with point B. Um, I, I couldn't accept that if that were in there. Um, but you know, I understand that the gifts and the benefits and whatever, but. To, to speak to those people, um, I think it's our responsibility to actually get clarification on development and um, and at the level of development is essential. It's, um, yeah, and I don't know what a developer is. I don't know what you're referring to. As I said before, it's a scale of, there's a scale of development. So um, I support your amendment, but I do not support the inclusion of point B. It's not, Councillor Fullerton, I'll just clarify, it's not an amendment, it's a, it's a motion that's been put forward. I and, I, uh, and I reiterate, Councillor Fullerton, that it, it is to be uh, a consideration. Councillor Kent. Thank you, Mayor. I, I note that basically we're only voting on a deferral and uh, we're not not really voting on A, B and C, that'll be a, a future argument. 
but I, I just wanted to raise the, the matter like uh, Councillor Fullerton has. Um, Western Port Ward councillors have, have met as a group of three um, uh, with, with developers in the past. And uh, I've seen this as a way of uh, uh, supporting our community. Um, and we've always disclosed this on our calendars. So it's been transparent that we've had these meetings. And, you know, some of these meetings, um, they just want an insight and we've given certain developers uh, information. Like if, if you want to come to the full nine councillors and produce a whole, whole development of 300 square metre blocks, um, you may be wasting your time. And so we're just giving a little bit of advice. And I think the de developers, they go off, they decide whether they take any of that information on board and suggestions. And, uh, but I think it's been a productive situation. So again, like Councillor Fullerton, I, I just, I, I think, you would be mad to do a one-on-one, -on -one, but I think when three councillors declare that they have met with somebody that uh, ethically we're still okay, they're quite okay and representing the community. Thank you, Councillor. Can Councillor Olaf, you had your hand up? I think my question has been clarified. This, this is just a proposal of, for consideration by um, down the track. Correct. Thank you, Councillor Lark. Would anyone else like to speak to or against this motion as it reads? No. Councillor Whelan, would you like to close or put it to a vote? Uh, just a couple of comments, please, Mr Mayor. Taking up Councillor Kent's comments um, is, is that I don't question the ethics of any councillor sitting around this. Well, we're not sitting around the table, but if we were um, today, uh, it's not about that. Uh, but it is about an abundance of caution. And uh, if one looks at the city of Casey, uh, city of Casey, and what happened there with Cranbourne North, uh, and the proceedings that are still before IBAC, I th I think one needs to be incredibly careful. My own view is is that I won't meet with developers, and I've I've had that for the whole term. I will meet with them, but always in a moderated process that then that then becomes an assembly of councillors report. And, and I I just think. That is a very wise way to go. I commend it. Uh, the, the issue around this is a deferral. And what this will do, I, I discussed this with our uh, governance officer, is, is that I would see a draft coming forward at some point that would, in, would address these issues. And as you address issues, you get into more detail and, and you realise the, um, there's a few more ferrets down the hole than what you realise. You deal with those in, in, in a draft that starts to close off those loose ends. And then, of course, it comes back to council for a briefing, uh, at which time uh, it can be tested. That's that's the process I envisage with this anyway, Councillor Ken. Thank you, Councillor Wheel. And we'll put it to a vote. All in favour of the motion as it reads. Councillor Kent, Councillor Rothfield, Lesserve, Fullerton's gone late, Tassari, Alice, Whelan, Brown, and oh, we've got a screen up. Oh. Sorry, sorry, I'm going to have to do the vote again because I got sidetracked. Councillor Kent, Councillor Fullerton, Rothfield, Lasserve, Tassari, Alice, Whelan, Brown, and Lark. Carry. Item number H12 creation of easement drainage reserve at Clifton Crescent Towers. Miss Jones. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I'm delighted to bring a drainage report to Council. And the purpose of the report is to seek Council to grant an easement on Council land. Council, as it, at its April meeting, resolved to seek submissions on the creation of a drainage reserve in Clifton, Clifton Crescent Cows in order, to in order to facilitate a two lot subdivision. No submissions have been received in response to Council's public no notice. Therefore, the report recommends that Council grant the easement. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Thank you, Ms. Jones. Can I have somebody move and second? Councillor Fullerton, you'd like to move. Anyone like to second? Councillor Whelan. Councillor Fullerton. Yeah, it's an exciting project, this, and I thank Ms. Jones for its significant. Um, yeah, it's, it's just a um, statutory requirement. So, um, yeah, it's not well begging, but I'm happy to support it. Thank you, Councillor Fullerton. Councillor Whelan. 
Yeah, I'm happy with that too, Mr. Mayor. Thank you, Councillor Whelan. Would anyone else like to speak to or against this recommendation? No, go to Councillor Fullerton. Would you like to close or put it straight to a vote? Uh, look, I could speak all day, but I think we should put it to a vote, Mr. Chair. Thank you, Councillor Fullerton. Yeah, let's put it to a vote. All in favour of the recommendation as it reads. Councillor Kent, Fullerton, Rothfield, Lusser, Tassari, Alice, Whelan, Brown and Lark Carey. Item number H13, and that is the future Wanthaggy recreation site uh, to be introduced by Ms Jones. Thank you, Mr Mayor. The purpose of this report is to request council consideration as to whether it seeks to be appointed the Committee of Management for a 27 hectare site in Bilston Street in Wanthaggy. The report is before council as in October 2018, council resolved to seek to be appointed the Committee of Management for 14.66 hectare Six, six hectares of Crown land with the objective of securing it for future recreational needs for Wanthaggy as our regional centre. Since this time, Delp have asked Council to consider a larger piece of land, which is 27 hectares in site. Delp has formed the view that the larger size site will provide for easier land management for both parties. The report recommends that Council accept the larger parcel and request the Minister to reserve the land for public purposes. Thank you, Mr Mayor. Thank you, Ms Jones. Would anybody like to move and second this recommendation? Councillor Brown and second Dick. Councillor Brown, you have an alternative. Is that correct or are you moving this motion? Councillor Brown, we can't hear you, I'm sorry. No, I, I move the officer's recommendation. Thank you, Councillor Brown. Can I have somebody second that? Councillor Lesser. Councillor Brown, would you like to speak? to the recommendation? Um, yes, I would, but before I do, I just have a couple of questions to seek clarification on. A clarification for Ms Jones, if we could. Yep. Uh, the first question is, what, what kind of sports are we likely to see on the Recreation Reserve? Thank you, Mr Mr. Mayor. Uh, through, through you, Mr Mayor. Um, the sports and active recreation needs study doesn't actually identify what type of ovals or what type of sports will be played on this site. It's reserving it for a long-term um, recreational use, which will be considered closer to the time. So in terms of one thing is next rec land, that would be in, um, the precinct structure plan. This is long-term, so this is probably 2030 um, and beyond. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Thank you, Ms. Jones. And a, a further question, Councillor Brown? Yeah. Thanks, Mr. Mayor. The, the other question was, uh, how much of the land is likely to be used as, uh, you know, for recreation purposes, uh, sport and recreation, and how much is likely to be used for other purposes? Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, so the original um, report considered by Council in 2018 was that the 14.66 would be sufficient for our Council's future rec needs closer to um, the time of use, utilising that site, a master plan would be developed um, and council, the council today would determine what the rest of the site could be used for within um, obviously the bounds of it being Crown land. Thank you, Mr Mayor. Thank you, Ms Jones. Councillor Brown. So, yeah, thanks, Mr Mayor. Thanks for clarifying the questions. And uh, yeah, look, I'm happy to support it. Um, as was mentioned, it's... Um, you know, it's it's the long-term future of the town. It's uh, right close by to the new secondary school. Uh, so that potentially there could be linkages there, I suppose. Um, it's a greenfield site. It's a large site. So there are lots of opportunities there. Thank you very much. Thank you, Councillor Brown. Councillor Lassau. Thank you, Mr Mayor. I think that uh, securing the 27 hectares site is, a, you know, that's a great win for one thaggy. It's, you know, our recreational needs and we're doubling one thaggy really effectively our residential zone. So I think that this will be a, a really a good outcome and into the future. I think that hopefully people will thank us for us keeping this as crown land. Um, I do note that in the report it said um, that it has not been prioritised for development at this stage and will be uh, retained with a licence for grazing purposes. So, you know, I think that into the future that'll have some great aspects. Thank you, Councillor Lassur. Would anyone else like to speak to or against this recommendation? No. Councillor Brown, would you like to close or put it to a vote? 
happy to put it to the vote. Thanks, Mr. Mayor. Thanks, Councillor Brown. All in favour of the recommendation as it reads. Councillor Kent, Fullerton, Rothfield, Lasseur, Tassari, Ellis, Whelan, Brown, Lark. Carried. Item number H14, reappointment of Tommy as the independent member to the audit committee. And to present this is Ms. Jones. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. The purpose of this report is to request council consideration of the reappointment um, of to Council's Audit Committee. The report outlines Mr. Berkeley's experience and contribution to audit and recommends his reappointment. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Thank you, Ms. Jones. Councillor Rothfield would like to move. Councillor Whelan, you would like to second. Councillor Rothfield. So, um, yes, I'm very happy to endorse the, the re reappointment of Homi for duty. Um, he is highly skilled. I've been on this um, audit committee now for almost four years and I uh, have a great deal of respect for his um, expertise um, and he, he gives his all, passionate and, um, and terribly experienced member of, um, of the um, Institute of Chartered Accountants and uh, highly skilled. So, yes, very happy to endorse that. Thank you, Councillor Rockfield. Councillor Whelan. Yes, thanks, Mr. Mayor. Just really to reinforce those comments by um, Councillor Rothfield, I also sit on the audit committee and work with Homie, and uh, he's got an inquiring mind, very well qualified and experienced. He represents, uh, he sits on the audit committees of a number of uh, other municipalities, so he brings that experience with him as well. So, no, it's a good appointment. Thank you, Councillor Wheel. And would anyone else like to speak to or against this recommendation? No, Councillor Rothfield, would you like to put it to a vote? Yep, all in favour of the recommendation as it reads. Councillor Kent, we'll just give Councillor Fullerton a minute just to uh, look up. Yep, Councillor Fullerton, Rothfield, Lasserve, Tassari, Ellis, Whelan, Brown and Lark. Carried. Item number H15, review of procurement policy and for the first time today to be introduced by Mr. Phil Mulder. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. The purpose of this re report is to obtain council approval for the revised procurement policy 2020 and the revised procurement delegations. Under section 186 of the Local Government Act 1989, council is required to review its procurement policy annually. The new Local Government Act 2020 will govern council procurement from June 2021. This review has been informed by external benchmarking as well as an internal survey of key procurement function users and stakeholders, including councillors and the executive. The key outcomes of the review include an increased focus on non-financial procurement principles including the need to consider local sourcing, corporate social responsibility and sustainability, in addition naturally to best value in making procurement decisions. The policy also provides for an increase in the CEO's delegated authority for budget expenditure to support and streamline the delivery of a record capital works program. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Thank you, Mr. Phil Malta. Can I have somebody move and second? Councillor Rothfield and second. Councillor Whelan. Councillor Rothfield. Thanks, Mr. Mayor. Um, well, this is the version number four of our of the uh, procurement policy, and every time we review it, um, each new version it obviously improves, and and so I support that. I think probably one of the key issues or or points in this is the increased delegation, proposed increased delegation of the CEO um, authority up to one million dollars. But I, I'd, I'd like to actually set that in. Um, in context here, um, there's per certain periods of time where council will not be able to actually um, um, approve expenditure, such as from September this year, we've got a caretaker period. September, we can't make decisions. October, there won't be any decisions made. We've got a whole new council in, in November. December starts the Christmas holidays, and you could actually find there is could be a five month lag. If we don't allow um, our CEO to have that right to make those decisions of that delegated authority. Uh, when you consider 
that we're looking at $28 million of um, infrastructure work, capital works the, uh, for this um, coming year, 30, on top of $35 million for this year, um, you can see that there is, a, it's, there is a need for an increase in that um, delegated authority in the amount. And you can see that there are other councils, the Arab Rangers is a million dollars, City of Case is $5 million. So it's not outrageous. It's, uh, it, the, the, um, the program we have of infrastructure, I think, is reasonable to assume and to allow our CEO to have those increased delegations. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Rothfield. Councillor Whelan. Thanks, Mr. Mayor. Our, our way of approving projects is through the budget. And uh, that once, once we have approved that, it's, we have an excellent team sitting in council to, with, under the CEO that needs to get on with the job and not be second guessed by us on, on a whole range of occasions. If, it, if for whatever reason, they're not gonna meet budget, then fair enough, it comes back to council, but otherwise, we, we've delegated it. A million dollars is, you know, against some of the projects we're doing, it is not a, not a, 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 an unreasonable amount. Um, I also want to go to the corporate social responsibility that Mr. Phil Malta um, mentioned, and and one of the things, and I have discussed this with him and the CEO, is that I would like to see that in our contracting with the big project, big capital works project we've got, that we are taking into account. Um, and I'm sure we will be, but taking into account the impact on certain parts of our community through the COVID-19 virus, and that we are making sure there's a focus on trainees and making sure there's also a focus on, on uh, employing our um, Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander people out of the local community. And I think there's scope through our RFP process, our, our purchasing process, to make sure that we can pursue those sorts of initiatives. I'd like to think we would do that and the corporate social responsibility is an important part of that. Thank you, Councillor Whelan. Would anybody else like to speak to or against this recommendation? Councillor Lark. You're on mute, Councillor Lark, sorry. I hope you weren't uh, going well. <laughs> Thank you, Mayor Tesori. In February, March 2017, Council adopted a new procurement policy, including reduction of the then CEO's delegation from $1 million to $250,000 in line with tender thresholds. The policy and delegations have served Council in good stead with appropriate strategic overview of major capital and operating expenditure during this council term to date, and I see no reason to reverse this decision. For example, with this proposal, the overrun of a million dollars over two financial years in relation to council's informa information technology project known as Phoenix, would not come to council by way of report and request for additional funds. If any variation, if, sorry, if any variation with the provider, namely Tech One, was $1 million or less, and most importantly, not be evident and transparent to our community. For example, in the 2021 budget, I understand $800,000 is embedded uh, in IT costs in the budget figures, and this is not sufficiently transparent for our community. I don't agree with the, the reversing the decision we made uh, in 2017. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Lark. Would anyone else like to speak to or against this recommendation? Councillor Brown. Thanks, Mr. Mayor. Um, look, I start off by saying that when we first came into council, um, one of the first things we did was we changed <clears throat> the delegation levels and we took delegations from $1 million for the CEO to award contracts down to 250. And um, I think it's worked really, really well for, for us, the council. And what it allows is for councillors to have an overview of all the projects that are coming through. Um, under the previous council, contracts were awarded up to $1 million. And, you know, they wouldn't have really been aware of what was happening until uh, they saw the contract 
contracts awarded report and then and then had a look at it and say, oh, what, what was this contract for? And then begin the discussion on it when it's already been awarded. So if we change the delegations to what's recommended, in effect, we'd be doing the exact reverse of what we did at the start of the term. Mm. So that doesn't make a lot of sense to me. Um, you know, councillors are meant to have oversight of this kind of thing. It's, it's uncontroversial, really, to suggest that, that councillors have, should have a very good oversight of major projects that are being awarded, and they really should award them themselves uh, to be accountable to the community and, and, and to increase the transparency for the community. Um, so I think, I think keeping the delegations at around what they are now is, is sufficient and is, is actually good practice. And I, I don't buy the, the argument that we're somehow holding uh, contracts up. I can't recall one project or one, one contract that we've been asked to uh, award and we rejected. I can't think of one example. So we have invariably passed all of these contracts as recommended. Um, and wh whether the, the councillors award the contract or the CEO awards the contract, the procurement team still have to do exactly the same uh, process and they produce exactly the same report. So they still have to do the work, even if the CEO is uh, awarding the contract. So I, I don't buy the line that councillors are somehow holding up contracts. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Brown. Would anyone else like to speak to or against the recommendation? No, Councillor Rothfield, would you like to close or put it to a vote? No, I just want to just address the, the um, issues that Councillor Brown um, brought up then. Um, you know, we continually hear about our slow-moving bu um, bureaucracy. Um, I, I wouldn't suggest that there's any different work from the procurement team in regards to um, establishing contracts and, 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 uh, and awarding um, contracts, um, but there certainly is a hold-up when you actually have to wait for a council meeting um, before you're actually able to... Um, to, to go ahead with that contract. And, and I think that um, I think there's no question that it actually adds, adds time to, to any particular um, uh, arrangement or a contract are being awarded. Uh, I, yes, it's true at the start of the term we did do that. And I think that, that we were all green and I think we all learned a lot. And I certainly, I have learned a lot um, and one would expect that. Uh, I think that to continue with a $250,000 uh, delegated authority. It's one of the lowest in, in Gippsland um, and considering the amount of, of capital works that we're doing, it, it doesn't make any sense. Um, in relation to the Project Phoenix, the Tech One, most of that um, money that was required for the, um, the Project Phoenix is resources. That's an operational thing. They're resources. We need really good people to get over some of the humps that we inherited, that, that our CEO inherited. Um, and we didn't, we did not have the right resources in place and we've acknowledged that and we have to spend the money, but that's an operational thing. That shouldn't even really come to council because it's not, um, and not a contract award. Uh, so I, yeah, I will just, uh, again, um, endorse the, the recommendation that we um, in, in revise the procurement delegation and um, yeah, accept the policy. Thanks. Thank you, Councillor Rothfield. I'll put it to a vote. All in favour of the recommendation as it reads. Councillor Kent, Fullerton, Rothfield, Lasserve, Tassari, Alice, Whelan, and against. Councillor Brown and Councillor Lark. Carried. And a, and a division, oh, thank you. I was waiting on that, Councillor Lark. Oh, I knew it was coming. All in favour of the recommendation. Uh, Councillor Lark has called for a division. Councillor Kent, Fullerton, Rothfield, Lasserve, Tassari, Alice and Whelan and against. Councillor Brown and Councillor Lark. Item number H16, award tender number 2001, Piney Bay Road Drainage Improvement, to be presented by Mr Phil Malta. Thank you, Mr Mayor. 
This report is seeking council approval for the award of the Pioneer Bay Road Drainage Improvement Project. This is a major council project that will be funded through a special charge scheme and will be delivered in conjunction with Melbourne Water, who will be completing flood mitigation, creek enhancements and wetland works at Pioneer Bay. Council received five conforming tenders and the report recommends a tender being awarded to All Waste Pumping Solutions, who have provided a competitive tender for the works with a cost including a 10% contingency of $3.817 million, which is well within the budget of $4.37 million. Extensive reference checks have been carried out confirming their suitability. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Thank you, Mr. Phil Malta. Can I have somebody move and second? Councillor Thornton and second. Councillor Wallace, uh, Councillor Thornton. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, I'm more than happy to move it and be very happy to see it con completed and that the um, whole of that area becomes livable. Thank you, Councillor Thornton. Councillor Wallace, third. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Yes, uh, as Councillor Fullerton said earlier on the day, uh, that it's been these uh, road schemes, road and, road and drainage upgrade schemes for our urban areas uh, have taken years. Uh, this one's been in the pipeline for a long time. Um, we did have a few holdups, but look, I think the community have well and truly been uh, consulted. There's a hardship policy, which I want to uh, reiterate to the community uh, that there's options there for payment. Um, it, you know, just it will give a better outcome for that community to have a road and drainage um, upgrade. Thank you, Councillor Sir. Councillor Kent, you had your hand up. Uh, yes, I was going to second it, but uh, I just uh, yeah back up what the two councillors have said. The, the community needs this and deserves it. When we have stormwater pits blowing up in the air from the pressure of the water and so forth, it, this area just needs to be fixed. And I, I look forward to Melbourne Water jumping in there and we doing our part too. Thank you, Councillor Kent. Would anyone else like to speak to or against this uh, recommendation? Councillor Ellis. Just as an example to reinforce what Councillor Fullerton was saying, I attended one of the early consultation meetings about this in 2016, before I became a councillor. And I was hoping to see this at least started before I stopped being a councillor. I know I'm not supposed to predict elections at the moment, but I think the fact that we haven't got another one that's ready to roll now, I find disappointing. And I'd also like to point out that there are other local government areas that have actually got federal funding, and I mean millions of dollars of federal funding to advance and pay for schemes just like this in other areas. And I think we need to look later on if there is another council after us. Um, I think we need to work with the federal government to actually get some funding because I think at the current rate we're going through these schemes, we've currently got 30 all up and it will be the year 2100 before we actually get the whole shire up to the standard that everybody deserves to live in where we've got a Houses on streets that aren't covered in mud and blown, have dust blown up on your panels and all that. I think we need to get a better funding mechanism. Thank you. Thank you, Council Ellis. Would anyone else like to speak to or against the recommendation? No. Council Fullerton, would you like to close or put it to a vote? Uh, look, I would just like to comment that I so look forward to something starting in our term, as Councillor Ellis just alluded to. Um, yeah, it's tragic that none are finished. But um, and I look forward to hearing the, the members of that community um, being elated with it once it's done, when they can finally use their community as it should be. Thank you, Councillor Fullerton. We'll put it to a vote. All in favour of the recommendation as it reads: Councillor Kent, Fullerton, Rothfield, Lasser, Tassari, Alice, Whelan. Brown Lark. Carrie. Item number H17, award attendant number 2006, demolition of Cows Cultural and Community Centre. Mr. Phil Malter. It's actually Mr. Sturt, Mr. Mayor, but um, thank you anyway. 
Um, I'm delighted to present the council uh, to cancel the outcome and recommendation from the tender evaluation process of tender number two triple zero six demolition of Cows Cultural and Community Centre. Public tender process was conducted for these works, which closed on 13th of May 2020. One conforming tender submission was received. This tender was evaluated against the criteria of integrated management systems, risk insurance and registration, compliance with specification, price, previous related experience and referee checks, and the construction period and methodology. A panel of council officers was formed for the purpose of tender evaluation and was chaired by an officer of the procurement team. The tender submission met all evaluation criteria. The tender is experienced in this line of work, are able to meet council's timelines and have a submitted price within the allocated budget. It is recommended that Deconstruct Group be awarded the tender for the demolition of the existing Cowes Cultural and Community Centre. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Thank you, Mr. Sturton. And Councillor Fullerton, you got in there very quickly to move it. Councillor Rothfield seconded. Councillor Fullerton. Thank you, Mr. Sorry. I'm more than happy to move this. It's um, We need to move on. We need to demolish the building. There's been a lot of... Uh, I would like to comment that there's been a lot of community concern relating to a vacant site being sitting there for a substantial amount of time. Um, there are always issues with demolition of buildings with what you find underneath. As has been stated, there is um, asbestos in the boxing for the slab on the perimeter and more than likely there will be underneath. Um, contaminated soil will hold it up for some time. But there's other reasons for it as well. We need to we need to push ahead with the whole project for one. Um, and the other, I'd like to equate this to um, there's a large house over at Coronet Bay that I've actually been involved with the redesign of, and um, our engineers have required that the existing house is re removed and the site sit. Um, as vacant for probably up to three or four months to allow the moisture to uh, get back into the soil. So um, there's also there are structural reasons for it, other than the, the fact that we need to move on, move ahead and um, and get something done. Thank you, Councillor Fullerton. Councillor Rothfield. Thanks, Mr. Mayor. Now, and it's good to hear from someone like Councillor Fullerton, who is absolutely an expert in his field, and and. Um, and I take a great deal of, of well, <laughs> okay. I take a great deal of attention and notice of that. Um, look, I, I absolutely support this recommendation. Um, there were 15, this is interesting, 15 um, companies registered interested, interest rather in this and downloaded the tender documents, but only one actually submitted a tender. So an interesting one. And that's the one that we selected, which was good. Um, I don't think we had much choice, but, it, the, the thing is that they did qualify and uh, we can get things moving finally. So this is good. Thank you, Councillor Rothfield. Would anyone else like to speak to or against this recommendation? Councillor Whelan, got your hand in the screen. Well done. Yeah, just very briefly, I'd just like to add to what Councillor Rothfield said, but the tender process shows they are very confident and, and a good choice, both in price and capability. So. Uh, you know, the, the points have been well made in terms of the site by Councillor Fullerton, so I'll leave it at that. Thank you very much, who is an expert in his field. So would anyone else like to speak to or against this recommendation? Councillor Lark? You're on mute, Councillor Lark. On, right. on, ref, on reflection, my view is that this project should not have been approved and that the overall estimated project cost of 19 million and related borrowings should have been allocated across our shire for basic and essential infrastructure Point needs order, Mr. Chairman. in no, relation to in uh, relation uh, to uh, uh, in relation uh, to uh, uh, sorry can I like just hold for 2 seconds point of order on on what grounds extraneous material he's not speaking to the uh, resolution in front of us he's trying to introduce other material that's going back over previous council decisions. That, I'll take that on board and I agree, Councillor Whelan, if you could stick to the uh, the uh, point, Councillor Lark. I'm, I'm talking about funding and additional costs, which I believe should have been allocated to local roads, drainage yeah. and footpaths. Councillor Lark, we're, we're discussing at the moment the awarding of the tender for the, the demolition of the Cows Cultural and Community Centre. 
and that is a component of the overall $19 million cost. I have Pleasure. nothing further to add. Thank you, Councillor Luck. Would anyone else like to speak to or against this recommendation as it reads? No, Councillor Fullerton, would you like to close or put it to a vote? Yeah, look, <clears throat> pardon me. Um, yeah, I'm more than happy to, to move ahead. Um, Councillor Luck's comments need to be answered It'll, at a later date, and, but there's clearly no understanding whatsoever of our community in his comments. Thank you, put it to a vote. Can I just ask before we put it to a vote, we'll keep this uh, on point, please not get uh, sidetracked off point or um, to get personal, please, if we could, thank you. So all in favour of the recommendation as it reads. Councillor Kent, Fullerton, Rothfield, Lasserve, Cesari, Alice, Whelan and Brown and against. Councillor Lark. Can I call for decision, please? Certainly. All in favour of the recommendation as it reads. A division has been called by Councillor Fullerton. Councillor Kent, Fullerton, Rothfield, Lasserve, Cesari, Alice, Whelan and Brown and against. Uh, carry. Item number H18, award attender number 2008, Wanthaggy Railway Station Extension and Glazing to be introduced at this time, I understand, by Mr. Phil Malta. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. This report is seeking council approval for the tender to extend the Wanthaggy Railway Station and surrounds. The works will be focused on the West Wing extension and this is expected to enhance the management and amenity of the Wanthaggy Historical Museum. The evaluation panel concluded that the tender submitted by TS Constructions will satisfy the works requirements and provide a best value outcome for Council. The cost of $266,000, including a 10% contingency, is within the budget allocation of $287,000. The savings will be passed on to the Historical Society as agreed. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Thank you, Mr. Phil Malta. Can I have somebody move and second this recommendation? Councillor Brown and seconded Councillor Lark. Councillor Brown. <clears throat> Thanks, Mr. Mayor. Very happy to support this uh, project going forward. Um, this has been, it's been taking a, a bit of time and it's been a while in the making. Uh, while Council has been in discussions with the Wanthaggy Historical Society. Um, the, the Historical Society does uh, valuable work. Um, it has members who uh, are deeply engaged in the local history of Wanthaggy and uh, they, they record that history. They are interested in that history. They share that history. And uh, this is a great project for them. And it's very important to, uh, you know, to, to help emphasise the important local history that we have. Thanks. Thank you, Councillor Brown. Councillor Lark. I simply want to say that this extension will, will enable appropriate storage and viewing of the Wanthagian District Historical Society's uh, vast collection and uh, well done to its members for their perseverance and commitment to one Peggy's heritage. Thank you, Councillor Lark. Councillor Rockfield. It's it's a wonderful thing. I'm, I'm I'm excited on a couple of bases. First of all, TS Constructions, well known and 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 uh, wonderful construction company, local people. Um, uh, the railway station is just the most divine um, museum and, and um, historical society location I think that you could wish to have and I, I think this is going to be a wonderful addition to it. The, um, they are absolutely dedicated volunteers and um, I, I'm thrilled that they will actually have this and it's great to see that there's a bit of project savings that's going to go towards them as well and I just I can't wait till the cultural centre's finished because that means the Phillip Island and District Historical Society will also have a wonderful home finally. And maybe any savings from that cultural centre could go back to the Historical Society. Just thinking. Yeah, Councillor Rothfield. Councillor Lasserve. 
Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. I think that's. Uh, I don't think it's. We'll go for the tit for the tat for the what uh, Councillor Lark was implying before, because this Councilor project. Lark, can we just stick to the? Uh, I am the because it's uh, this project is even though it's based in Wonthaggi, it's a great asset to the history of Bass Coast, and the community there have presented to council and have. Um, shown that this their project uh, is worthy of this kind of funding and I endorse it. Thank you, Councillor Lasserve. Would anyone else like to speak to or against Councillor Whelan? Yes, uh, I'd just like to reinforce Councillor Lasserve's comments there and say that it's important as councillors will take a whole of uh, council view and uh, I would like to strongly support this as an Island Ward councillor. I think it's important that we support our other wards and uh, their historical so societies as well. They do a great job. And I must say, I have a particular affection for one for one Thaggy. I go there quite a bit to play music and the like, and I'm glad to see these sorts of developments occur. Thank you, Councillor Whelan. Would anyone else like to speak to or against this recommendation? No, Councillor Brown, would you like to close or put it to a vote? Happy to put it to the vote, thanks. Councillor Brown put it to a vote. All in favour of the recommendation as it reads. Councillor Kent, Fullerton, Rothfield, Lasserve, Tassari, Alice, Whelan, Brown and Lark. Carried. That brings us to the end of items meeting a decision by council. So now item number I, statutory reports. Can I have a Cancel and move a motion that we accept item. I've got Councillor Rothfield and Councillor Whelan already for hands up. Yep. That we receive items I1 to I5 as a block. All in favour? Councillor Kent, Fullerton, Roth, Rothfield, Lasserve, Tassari, Alice, Whelan, Brown, Lark. Carried. Can I now ask? Uh, or council if they wish to discuss any item in the report. No, I request council that uh, we move the recommendation that we have the recommendations of the items I1 to I5 be adopted. Councillor Whelan and seconded. Councillor Fullerton, all in favour. Councillor Kent, Fullerton, Chuff, Rothfield, Lasserve, Tassari, Alice, Whelan, Brown and Lark, Carrie. Any urgent business? No. Okay. So we move forward, and that brings our open meeting to a close. I would like to just uh, thank you all. It's uh, been a it's been a it's been a marathon. Uh, nearly four hours, but I thank you all for uh, for watching. I hope you are. I'll be interested to see if anyone's made it all the way through. Uh, but I thank you if you have. Our next uh, councillor meeting, our uh, council is monitoring and implementing the COVID nineteen pandemic response and restrictions set out by the state and federal government. Council will be pausing community connection sessions for the coming months. The next ordinary council meeting will be held virtually on the fifteenth of July, twenty twenty commencing at 11 o'clock. It will be open to the public via live streaming. I thank you all and I now, I now move a motion to close, to close yeah, the meeting. Yeah, yeah. I have somebody, Councillor Fullerton and seconded. Councillor Whelan, all in favour. Councillor Kent, Fullerton, Rothfield, Lasser, Lasari, Alice, Whelan, Brown, Lark. Thank you all and uh, be safe. And if I can ask councillors just to sit quiet and wait.